while you're doing that, I can say, hey, this is Michael Shimidas from the mayor's office. And uh, Chris and Gail from Star White House have been uh, the part of the team that's you know, leading the redesign for the Prominent Hill Park. And, uh, and Chris is gonna present on, on the, I guess on the materials and sort of on some of the goals in the project. I'm looking forward to hearing public feedback. Yes, so thank you uh, very much to everyone for giving us this, this time. Um, and I know that we spoke uh, just under about a month ago. Um, and so the differences between the presentation that, that you saw a month ago and today is just a little bit more refinement in terms of the plan and specifically the materials. Um, we're, we're approaching, you know, finalizing the drawings and, and hoping to get this out to bid so that uh, we can have uh, the park ready um, by the end of the year. I'll, I'll go a little bit more into detail in the schedule in just a little bit. Uh, but basically the, the, the goal of this presentation is to, um, to revisit the goals of the project um, and to give you a little bit more specificity on the materials uh, that we are intending on using so that you can get a better feel for, for, for the overall um, park material. So I don't want to repeat myself too much, but just in case there's anyone from the public who uh, wasn't on the meeting last month. Um, the, the primary goal of this, of this project, it is of course uh, funded through uh, the New York State DRI funding, um, as well as some funding from the city of Hudson. And the primary purpose of the project is to provide an accessible uh, route from the sidewalk of Front Street up to the upper promenade. Um, uh, there's about 14 feet of elevation change so that uh, and, and, and there has been no accessible route uh, previously so and we know that's been a big priority for the community here so that is the primary um, goal is getting a ramp but it, as part of that um, and considering it's a sizable ramp uh, we are going to be um, working on other parts of the park as well and really trying to shape the entire lower plaza area um, to, to really provide an improvement to, to the park overall. Um, so we're integrating the accessible route. We're also reinforcing the visual relationship between Warren Street and Front Street, um, both looking from the street up into the park and, and vice versa. Uh, we also wanna provide a, a programmatic space at the terminus of Warren Street uh, for public assemblies and um, take the plaza space that's there and really kind of give it uh, more of a identity and, and, a, and a feeling of place. Uh, that would accommodate a lot of different uses for performances or community events or, um, or what have you. Uh, we're looking at the planting as well. There's some beautiful existing trees, um, uh, some of which we are planning on keeping and just uh, supplementing that with um, new plantings. Uh, but one thing that's also a high priority is the ease of maintenance of these plantings so that you can have a beautiful landscape that is not a, 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 a large um, commitment uh, from the city's side for maintenance. Um, we also think safety is important and we've heard that from the community. So we're actually, uh, we're relocating six of the lights, the existing light poles within the park uh, to actually create a clearer path from the street to the top. We're also adding two additional light poles um, uh, to provide a little bit more lighting within the park. And you'll see that on the plan in just a few minutes. And in general, we wanna celebrate the historic um, nature of the park. We, we recognize the incredible history and we'll go through a little bit of that as well. Um, we wanna celebrate it and connect to that history and the geometries of the upper promenade um, through primarily through the materials and the overall design. This is a quick overview of the schedule. We kicked off uh, earlier this summer. We are now in this uh, finishing up the construction documentation phase and getting ready to, to get these plans out to bid. You can see here that the overall um, sort of how we've divided up the space, the, mo the majority of the work is happening in what we're showing the street level connection and the urban park, this, this sort of lower and mid plaza areas. We are uh, more or less leaving the upper promenade as is both for uh, you know, historic um, you know, preservations reasons, but also uh, the primary goal being to get people to the promenade, um, and that primarily happens in the lower spaces. Uh, just quickly to show, you know, diagrammatically um, the challenge of, of getting people up um, over the court, maybe 130 feet, um, 
to 14, a little over 14 feet of elevation change. So many of you I'm sure are familiar with the existing conditions. Um, you have the existing plaza here, which is primarily a concrete plaza. Historically, it actually was an extension of the roadbed of uh, Warren Street. Um, we actually have done some test pits here with the Department of Public Works and have found uh, you know, what, what may have been uh, old roadbed kind of profile. So it's interesting just from a historic point of, point of view. This is the opposite view looking uh, east up Warren Street. And as I'm sure most people are aware, the, there is also a concurrent DRI project uh, that is being run by a streetscape team, uh, Arterial uh, and, and others um, that are looking at holistically at the streetscape within the bridge district of Hudson. And that will uh, intersect and meet our project area with improvements to the intersection of Front Street and Warren Street. And we're coordinating with that team to make sure that our design for the park and their design for the streets and the intersection uh, work well together material wise um, and, and also from a geometry wise, you know, how people are crossing the street and entering the park. Uh, the site conditions, you know, as you can see in these photos, um, there, there are some uh, underground utilities we're aware of uh, that actually have, have posed difficulties to projects in the past. Uh, so we're being very sensitive to that. Um, we have looked at the existing drainage and, and uh, you know, catch basins and infrastructure there, some of which will be continued to be used, others will be capped uh, or removed. Uh, most of this, the, the brick and concrete plaza that will be removed, that's part of the 1970s uh, urban renewal sort of uh, construction of the lower plaza uh, that our work is going to be replacing. The existing lighting, as I mentioned, it's in good condition, but we are just going to be relocating six of the existing poles to, to work better with the design. So, you know, obviously the site has an amazing history. We've fallen in love with the history of, as we've been working on this project and the significance that it has to uh, the story of Hudson and the community of Hudson um, going back uh, in the late 18th century as a formation of a public space for the people of Hudson uh, in perpetuity as a place for people as a public walk or a mall. Um, and so we think that's a really special um, place and it's a privilege to be working on the park. Uh, and we uh, coordinated with the uh, Hudson Area Library who provided a wealth of information, both images and uh, text uh, to really paint a full picture of kind of the life story of the park. Um, that's been really incredible. We've actually used some of these images, for example, you the benches you're seeing here uh, and with that we've seen in other photos and illustrations um, are very similar to actually the style of bench that we're proposing uh, to be used in the park. I had mentioned, you know, the 1970s, there was the urban renewal reconstruction of the lower plaza, much of which remains today um, that uh, you can see these photos from close to uh, when it seems like a new construction of the park there in the 1970s. So our role in the project kicked off uh, properly this summer uh, with a series of outdoor public events, um, starting with a concept and moving forward through design development and getting feedback from the community along the way. Uh, so these were initial approaches as to how we might get people from the street to the upper promenade uh, in an accessible manner, but also in a way that would create program zones. Uh, and, and we really were looking for people people's feedback, particularly those who do have accessibility uh, challenges of what their pref preferred um, routes are or kind of just how they feel about these various approaches. So we incorporated that into a final concept, two final concept designs that we were looking for feedback uh, from the public at the end of August. Uh, and we had a wonderful event there at the park. And then we spent about the next month collecting survey responses uh, from online and paper surveys um, and develop taking the feedback we had gotten at the event and basically synthesizing it into a 
final concept plan that was then presented to the city and the mayor. You can see here these two schemes, um, the feedback we got, and then, you know, it was a pretty close, not entirely 50-50, but basically this, the, the feedback we got was that people liked some aspects of, of, of the concept one, which we called the meander, and concept two, which we called the terrace. Um, and we incorporated that into, into what became the final design. So you can see here, this is our updated and final um, plan for the park. And this is uh, now we are, um, you're seeing new material if you were on the meeting last month. Uh, this is an updated plan rendering that's um, accurate to where we currently are, um, showing the, the geometries of the path, uh, both the accessible route as well as the main stair axis. So I'll just walk through looking at the plan now the various materials that we have. And then in the following slides, we've got uh, photo examples of those materials. I actually have a couple physical materials here in the office with me. I can hold up the camera. Um, so coming in from Front Street, we have a sort of a stair and ramp assembly that sort of draws people into the, the, the central plaza. This central ramp would be uh, granite sets similar to those you would see in um, a lot of uh, you know European plazas or uh, you know small four inch by four inch uh, granite set cobbles, um, but they are set flush and smooth and even so that they are an accessible uh, traveling surface. So this ramp is flanked by uh, bluestone slab steps on either side. They're wide, about five feet uh, wide in tread length. Um, so sort of a grand, you know, larger scale. Uh, stair entrance. Um, and in between the stair and ramps, we would have a simple um, painted black steel uh, handrails. Entering the plaza, you have, uh, again, the granite sets there um, within the large oval and then bordered by a limestone uh, paver um, border edge. Uh, and then we have sort of seating spread out around the plaza itself. Uh, circling the plaza. Uh, you have access to an open lawn space on the southeast side of that plaza. Uh, and then you also have the access to the, uh, to, the, to the ramp itself. On the western edge of the plaza, we have these sort of sloped lawns with um, stone slab seating. So that would also be limestone. And we, we've worked very, uh, quite a bit with the local quarry uh, in Alcove, New York. Uh, their, their name is New York Quarries. And we are sourcing our bluestone from there, as well as our limestone. They have a high density bluestone, they call alcove bluestone, um, which has really great uh, properties in terms of its durability uh, and color. And the uh, Onondaga limestone is also a very highly dense limestone. Historically, it's actually, it's been used uh, in parts of the construction for the Erie Canal. Uh, we've used it for a number of other projects and are, are very happy with, um, the way that it comes out uh, in, in various finishes that I, I can show you. Uh, we, we also are including an accessible ramp, a concrete ramp coming from the existing parking lot. Uh, we thought it was important that we not only provide an accessible route from the sidewalk, but also from the parking lot as well. Um, and we're hoping in future phases of the park that that parking lot may be able to be programmed in a number of different ways. Uh, working our, up the ramp, uh, this is a concrete ramp, and actually you may notice, I'll zoom in just slightly here. Um, the one change also from, from last month is we've actually adjusted the width of the ramp so that these landings become a little bit more generous and, and, and wider. It would actually, actually create sort of these smaller subspaces, um, and uh, we think will we'll allow for a, a more enjoyable route um, and journey up this path. You can see the, the yellow symbols here are the two new proposed light poles. We, we thought it would be important not only to have uh, the lighting kind of marching its way up the central axis, but also along the accessible route so that uh, in the evening hours, dusk, um, and in the nighttime, it's, it's, we have good visibility along the accessible route as well. Um, 
the, the the accessible ramp and the stair route uh, sort of intersect at this central um, node here, which also provides an access to the existing playground area. Um, and the existing playground area, we are uh, leaving the existing um, play structures there. They're in good condition. We've actually learned that they're less than 10 years old. They were installed in 2012. Um, we are uh, planning on improving the safety surface there with a engineered um, fiber wood mulch. Uh, what is there now is a mixture of pea gravel and seems to be recycled uh, tires or rubber crumb of some kind. Um, so we're gonna be replacing that as well as in, in, in the central part of the playground, putting in a, a couple different spray water spray features. Um, as most of you know, I'm sure that there is an existing water spray feature in the park uh, that was part of that 1970s construction. It's, it's popular in the summertime and we wanted to make sure that that was still available to the community, but we are consolidating that sort of <clears throat> um, play use within the playground. So there will be a spray hoop and a ground spray, which we have photos of in the presentation, as well as sort of an in, um, uh, image of a whale um, on the ground plane, uh, which will be created using colored concrete. Uh, of course, the whale being connected to sort of the image of the city of Hudson. And we see that on our, on our road signs. And uh, it was suggested to us by uh, one of the council members. Um, the, the accessible route continues up. We also have access from the ramp into these sloped lawn spaces. This upper slope lawn spaces will also have a uh, sort of boulder seating area that not only will be a social space, but also potentially a more sort of informal or, or uh, exploratory play space. And all routes, of course, uh, connect to the promenade itself. Um, and we have uh, created sort of a landing here uh, currently, you know, right now there are stairs that, that um, are located right at the uh, historic stone wall. We're pushing the stairs slightly to the east to create this landing that can, that can connect to the ramp. You can see for planting, um, most of these trees are, are existing, but we do, we are proposing uh, new canopy trees that will be going up um, the central staircase, as well as a number of uh, ornamental or, or understory multi-stem flowering trees that'll give spring color and sort of a lower canopy um, woodland feel, particularly uh, through the, 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 uh, the ramp um, route. And we'll also have some low maintenance shrubs um, that will create sort of a low shrub border, um, particularly along the southern edge of the park, along this chain link fence, that will just give a bit more definition to the lawn spaces, as well as a, a nice kind of border or buffer uh, along the southern edge of the ramp. So the, just to give you a visual idea of what these materials are. Um, so for the, the ramp itself, we're using, uh, proposing to use a colored concrete for the ramp and the curb uh, along the ramp. And then for the central plaza, we have these granite sets that would be in the central plaza as well as the, uh, the entry ramp you saw connecting to the front street sidewalk. Um, I spoke about that border of limestone pavers around the plaza and brush finish. I also have a sample here of, uh, of that limestone finish from New York quarries. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a smooth walking surface, but all these materials, of course, meet the necessary slip resistance uh, required. Um, there's a small portion that will, of, of the pathway connecting to the playground that will be asphalt. It's, it's actually most of the paths in the park currently are asphalt replacing the existing asphalt connecting to the playground with, with new asphalt as the existing is you know, a bit cracked and in poor condition. Um, there is also a significant amount of granite curb in the park and we wanna reuse as much of that as possible. So we are gonna be reusing some of the straight sections of curb uh, along the front, uh, uh, the front street edge of the park, as well as um, along uh, some of the path to the, the playground. 
Uh, this is a, just the engineered wood mulch safety surface that I was speaking about. It's about, a, uh, about an eight inch deep uh, profile that provides uh, sufficient fall height or safety zone uh, around all of the existing equipment. Uh, bluestone steps, this is actually an image. All the image of the bluestone are, are actually sent to us from the quarry. So this is the actual bluestone material um, that we would be using. Um, we're proposing to have this sort of uh, natural rocked face to the treads of the stairs um, with a smooth tread surface. For the coping, we, we have a bluestone coping that runs, uh, I'll just go back to the plan, um, along the central stairs here, the walls on either side would have the bluestone coping. And in one particular area here on the north, um, the northwest side uh, of, of this wall here, there's actually would be an exposed face between two and four feet um, that, you would, that would be visible from this playground area. And so we are proposing to actually have that veneered uh, with the same bluestone material. And any, anywhere else that there would be an exposed wall uh, would, would have the veneer, but that's the, the primary area. Uh, we're also proposing the bluestone cobble curb or a split block curb. Uh, and that would be used uh, for most of the curb around, around the plaza, for example, um, would be that split block curb as well as along the, the entry assembly. So for furnishing and, and seatings, this is the bench I was referring to. It's uh, the settee bench. This is a bench that's actually you know, found in Central Park. Um, and it, it has that sort of simple but classic style that uh, remarkably similar to the bench that we saw in the, um, in the photos that we've seen of, of, in the illustrations of the historic scenes at Promenade Hill Park. And we think that it'll, it'll fit really well into the space. Um, for the, for the, the two different sort of stone seating, we have slabs and boulders. And this is just to give you an idea of these, you know, the, the slabs themselves would be set into the grade of the sloped lawns um, to provide a sort of uh, natural uh, amphitheater style seating. So people could sit there uh, to watch an event in the plaza, but also sit there for a casual social seating or again, a, a more informal play opportunity for children. Um, we are proposing to have the, the, the powder coated black handrails. This is um, just an example. We're, we're still fine tuning the exact geometry of, of, of the, the handrail, but it would be, it would be a pipe rail handrail, um, uh, relatively simple, but um, still with sort of the, that classic feel, tying it to the same feel of the settee bench uh, of kind of what we're going for. Uh, this is the proposed receptacle that we are planning on using. Um, and we're also coordinating uh, with the streetscape team to see if we can have a continuity of, of materials for, for the receptacle uh, that they may be using along the streetscape. For the, the spray elements, this is the, uh, the two products that we are proposing. Uh, we, there would just be one spray loop uh, and then the fountain ground spray, which would be serving as the, uh, the, the blowhole, if you will, from the, from the whale in the, set in the concrete. And this is all powered. Uh, this, is, this is a hydraulic activator that requires no electricity or uh, any sort of um, vault. Uh, it's, it's a hydraulic mechanical activator that once pushed activates the water for between you know two and four minutes, um, and the city of Hudson can um, you know turn on or off the water supply as needed on a seasonal or or hourly day to day basis. For planting, we, we spoke a little bit about this. Um, there are some beautiful existing uh, linden trees in the park that we are uh, working to preserve. Um, as well as the, uh, there's um, existing um, scholar trees. We are actually proposing, um, we're thinking now instead of a plane tree, we're actually proposing a, a ginkgo tree uh, that would run up the axis of the stairs. And the reason why we think a ginkgo is a, is a, a better choice, it, there's actually a lot of historic precedent of ginkgos being used in early American parks. And they have a little bit more of an upright habit, which actually will work well in the space. 
and they have a brilliant yellow fall color, uh, which we think will look fantastic, you know, from Warren Street looking uh, towards the park uh, will really kind of draw the eye and draw visitors up that route up to the promenade hill. Um, native understory trees were, were primarily looking at the redbud as the primary understory tree that we'd be using. That's the central image here with the beautiful spring uh, flowers. And we have a palette of, of low maintenance shrubs and ground covers that we would primarily be using again along that southern border along the uh, the uh, uh, chain link fence. And of course, open lawn. Um, we are proposing most likely to be using sod in, in, in installing sod for, for most of the new lawn so that you uh, get that instant lawn and it, 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 you know, instead of waiting, needing to wait and be careful about establishing a newly seeded lawn. And I'll end for now with uh, just looking at phasing. Uh, one thing we took out of our public interaction was and uh, in, in our community outreach is that there's so many, so many, uh, um, so many desires for this park uh, and so many kind of ways in which people would like to see the park improved or, or added onto. And as much as we would like to accommodate each and every one of those wants um, from a, from a budgetary standpoint and just from a logistical standpoint, uh, we, we need to focus on the core of the park in which we're working and providing the accessible route and in some of these program spaces. However, we wanted to, to document and recognize some of the other things that we've heard and, and things that we think would make sense from a, from a longer term phased approach. Um, that includes improvements to the, the playground, um, you know, further improvements to the playground as well as expanding possibly into the, play, uh, the, the parking lot here on the west side of the Chamber of Commerce, potentially as a space for court sports or, 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 or uh, you know, striping, multi-use striping uh, on the paved areas. And finally, uh, in, up on the promenade itself, um, you know, further improvements to, to the pavement there. Uh, we are hoping to do some very minor improvements to the pathway with, in terms of stone screenings, cleaning it up and making sure that it is smooth and accessible uh, from, the, from the upper plaza here to the south. Um, we know there's a stone screening path to a, to a historic uh, rubbing marker that um, we want to make sure is accessible. But beyond that, uh, new tree planting, new seating, um, repair of the historic walls, as well as restoration of the fence which remarkably appears to be the same fence that was in the historic photos, but certainly could use probably uh, a stripping of many, many layers of paint, probably lead abatement and, and repainting. Um, so those are all things that we hope um, can, can be done for the park in the future. And we just wanted to, to document that uh, in some way. I believe Gail has joined as well, but uh, that's, the overview of the project and um, would be happy to take any questions uh, from the public or, or from the committee. Chris, that was great. Very well done. Thank you. Uh, at this point, the comments or questions should be from, from the public. Uh, so I invite folks to either raise their hand or, or oh, speak up. Chairman? Yes. Chairman, uh, just two things. Before, before you guys vote to open the hearing, um, can I just have a, a few moments to talk to the board about procedure on this application? Uh, on this specific one? Yes. Of course, Victoria, go ahead. So um, similar to the 620 Union Hotel project, which was a significant project where the planning board had to conduct a seeker review. Um, in this case, a seeker review still is outstanding. Um, and because it's in a historic district, um, it would likely be a type one action. Uh, we actually don't have enough information to determine whether it's type two or type one just from uh, what's on the plans right now. So to save time, because the city is under a time crunch um, to get the bonding resolution passed and, and go out to bid, I'm gonna ask the board to make a motion uh, now to authorize the common council to serve as lead agency in a coordinated seeker review this would allow the Common Council to, to go back, look at the specifics of the project, decide whether it's type two or type one, and then we wouldn't have to wait the 30 days for the Common Council to circulate it to you. You would just automatically have consented, 
which means that you could vote um, right after the Common Council makes its decision. Victoria, what can we vote on or not vote on uh, this morning? You can vote to open the public hearing, um, but that is it at this point. Is there anything that we need to do in this meeting that would, I'm, I'm in complete concurrence and I know the commission is, we, we don't want to uh, not only not interfere, we wanna forward this project. It's a, it's a great project for Hudson. It's clear a lot of people have worked very hard on it. Uh, I just don't want us to, to be a, a cause for any form of delay. So if there's something we can do to move these guys forward, we yeah. would wanna consider that. So right now, um, I would like someone to make a motion to consent to the Common Council serving as lead agency. I'll make that motion. May I have a second, please? From the commission. A second. Second. Thank you very much, Chip. Thank you very much, Hugh. Uh, by voice, all in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Are there any commissioners opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, thank you. And this way, you know, we just want to make sure everything's being done properly because it's such a good project for the city. Um, what, what are the implications, Victoria, for our next phase of discussion? Because uh, so we would open go ahead and give all your comments. And as you normally do, you could you could give them feedback and find the application complete pending a seeker determination. I would like to do that. Thank you very much. And then, you know, we already have a draft C of A, so we could, we could formalize that after the secret determination is made. Got it. Uh, at this point, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak about this project? If there is no one, then we're going to close this phase of public hearing on uh, Promenade Hill Park and we can formally uh, open our uh, regular meeting. The regular meeting of uh, Historic Preservation Commission is called to order. I ask the commissioners to review uh, what ended up being extraordinarily short, but otherwise perfectly done minutes by Aaron from our last meeting. So take a moment or two or whatever you need to review the minutes from the previous meeting. If there are no issues, uh, I'm asking for a motion to approve the minutes uh, for uh, the meeting of December 18th. Anyone? And Hugh makes that motion. May I have a second, please? You can raise your hand. Chip, thank you very much. All in favor by voice, aye. Aye. Are there any opposed to approval of the minutes? The minutes are approved. There are no certificate of appropriateness votes uh, on the schedule for today. So we open our regular meeting uh, with a review of uh, 241 Columbia Street. Uh, and at this point, we're, we're switching uh, priorities at this point. Uh, basically, I wanna hear from the commission and the commissioners uh, on, on uh, their thoughts going forward on 241 Columbia Street. This is... Uh, uh, the second time or, or so, at least for the commission, that we've had a chance to review this. There have been some, uh, 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 some of the specifications we asked for in the prior meeting uh, on the greenhouse, on materials and so on have been uh, provided by the applicant. Uh, so I thank Jane and company for that. And, and commissioners, go ahead, who would like to speak? Okay, I can speak then. I, I, you know, I stand this, I would open by saying, I think this is a tremendous project. I, I feel excuse like I felt before. Excuse me, could, could I ask, um, is, is, this, uh, is this purely the commissioners that are on this call or are there public people still on the call? Public he people are always uh, invited to our meetings, but at this point, they're not invited to speak. I, I want to hear from the commission and the commissioners. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, John. I'm, you know, I stand by what I said before. I think it's an extraordinary project. It's very exciting. 
there is, you know, I think, um, I think both voices that we heard from, from the public were compelling to me because I, I, I agree with both. We're very lucky to have this going forward. We're very lucky to see this project being rejuvenated, repurposed in this critical building brought back into service for Hudson. But there's, you know, we, as, as I think a number of us spoke about last time, there are just a few things that, you know, if one had their druthers, they would not see altered in order to, to, in, in order to preserve some of the important elements of the building. So I guess my question would be, is the applicant open particularly, you know, we, we discussed this last time, the things, Chip, I, you know, I'll, I'll turn over, I'll defer to you, but I think the things that stuck out in my head r remain that the, co the covering of the, 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 the basement register on the facade, f turning, turning that from traditional stucco or masonry to clapboard. And truthfully, that is the, that is for my, for me personally, that is the major, uh, that is sort of the major change that, that, that is troubling to me. The, you know, ideally the, the, the if there was a way to make that, um, those are, those, the, the location of the doors remain where they are, that would also be great. But everything else to me is extraordinarily good. The greenhouse is, is a brilliant idea. It, the the use the way the building appears to uh, be projected to be used is exciting and that I guess I I have in mind is more a comment than a than a a question and I will stop there. No, thank you very much for John and thank you for bringing us back to some of the 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 reservations that were expressed before. Uh, I for one uh, am hugely grateful to uh, to uh, to the owner. Uh, and to uh, Jane and her folks uh, for moving this forward. It was it was uh, uh, a journey that they undertook to save an important uh, property. Uh, and uh, that's extraordinary. And I understand the issue on the on on the clabbered. Uh, in our previous meeting, we talked about it and and uh, I thought there there was some degree of flexibility. Uh, by the applicant to to refer back to the stucco rather than the clabbered. If we could narrow down our concerns to that element, we could discuss it. And I think we got a good shot at moving forward, but I'll shut up. Chip, did you want to comment? Um, no, I don't, I don't have anything further to say than what has been said here today by some of the public and what uh, we had talked about in the previous uh, application. Um, of course, we're all happy to see this going forward and being a building that's uh, saved and and uh, and reused, and uh, uh, we're very happy about that. Some of the details that we've talked about, I think, that hadn't been responded to by the applicant, it's a little disappointing not to have them uh, explore some of these other options. Um, it'd be terrific if they could uh, if they could uh, be a little more uh, forthcoming in their um, presentation, but, you know, uh, it's uh, overall, it's it's certainly moving in the right direction. Um, uh, I'm hoping Chip, that we haven't that in this seen, meeting. Excuse can, me. Go ahead. I, I'm just a little concerned that we haven't seen uh, the uh, floor plans that uh, some of the uh, items that the applicant has suggested has been have been provided to the uh, CEO have not been provided to us. I hope that that does not uh, constitute any kind of a precedent. Uh, when we look at uh, many of the other applications that we receive, uh, they're full, they're complete, they disclose the plan, they disclose uh, many additional details and uses and so forth. We're not seeing that here in this application. That also is a little disappointing. Uh, we were looking at a PowerPoint. Uh, I'll refer back to Jane to comment if there are other documents and if we could be specific about what we're asking to look at, that would probably help her a lot. And maybe if, um, thank you, Chip. And, and what I'm doing is I'm taking my notes, but um, you know, it'd be great to hear the, the first round of comments from everyone and then, and then I'm happy to have a further discussion. So. I just want to uh, add a, just a small point. I agree with what John said in large part. The thing that's most important to me is the issue of the masonry or stucco foundation. 
Um, I think that some of the changes, including lowering the stairs, make a lot of sense in terms of accessibility to the building and will be functionally beautiful and well integrated into the site. But I feel that keeping the foundation uh, uh, some sort of stone sets off the silhouette of the old building in an important way and actually to me helps to unify the elements that are new with the with the basic silhouette of the building which is the outstanding architectural feature in my opinion of it so i think that really does make a difference understood thank you q well, I, I don't want to be repetitive of uh, what I said last time we reviewed all this, but I think that, you know, firstly, you know, between Victoria, Jane and, and Peggy, who are, you know, the owner and, and the people involved in, in designing this uh, clearly labor of, of love, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's fantastic what, what's happening to this building, which probably would have fallen down eventually. So, you know, if our only comment is, uh, or our, our only possible uh, objection uh, is the lower portion portion of the stone versus the clapboard, I think we're in a good place. I think that the rest of the building um, between the greenhouse and the cupola and all of the other details that have been addressed uh, are, um, Going forward, uh, you know, the, the building is going to be tremendous. It's a great addition to the neighborhood. And um, I think that we will come up with a good solution for all on that one detail that we're currently discussing. But I think I speak for everybody that, you know, it's fantastic what's happening to this building. And I, I really look forward to seeing it complete. Thanks very much, Hugh. That was uh, very helpful. Uh, Paul Barrett. Have you, have you caught up? I see you were able to join the meeting. Yeah, um, uh, hi, Phil. Yes, yeah, I would have to say ditto to everything that uh, you just expressed. You know, it was always, you know, my issue was only the foundation, covering the foundation. Again, I think everything else, you know, the plans for the building are really wonderful. Okay. Jane, may, may I ask you to, yeah. if, if you want to respond? Sure, thank you very much. Well. Um, I think that we have a consensus, and as I said in, in, in the last time, um, that, that we wanted to keep the, the covering of the lower building in as an option, but clearly there is a strong um, feeling that, that it would be better to stick with the, the stucco masonry, and I think that, that my client, Victoria, she's on, if you wave your head in a, in a positive way, I think we can, we can say we will retain a stucco finish to that bottom level. And um, so that's that's one thing and I hope that we can all, that, and that's great. And that would be a stucco that would also uh, reflect the stucco that would be on the, the base of the, the greenhouse as we presented it. So, so that's one thing. The other thing that I really would like to address is, um, is the lowering of the stair. And I'm gonna say this with some emotion. We probably, I, we've probably, we probably looked at 45, 50 schemes for, for, making, for making the front of this work. Um, we, and, 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 and keep at the same level and work through this. Um, there is one drawing, there's two drawings that I'd like to share with you. And what those mostly ended up making is, is a, a combination of stairs that came out off and then they had platforms and then they, it, 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 it really took away almost everything that made it ADA or not ADA, but code compliant, made it look like a, a, a crab in front of the building. Um, it, just, it just was not elegant, it wasn't appropriate. And so when we came up with the solution that we did, I will, do want to show you a only two things that show the elevation and how it goes into the building. Because what, through this, through this approach, and let me see if I can, let me see if you, um, I thought that I had the actual drawings up. Okay, here's our, here's our presentation. Let me see if I can find, 
Um, Let me see. Sorry, y'all. This is always uh, tricky, this stop share screen. Let me pull up another, another. Uh, let's see, okay. Closed entry, okay. Okay, I'm going to show this and then the close line. Okay, I've got my two drawings, thank you. Um, I'm coming back. This is the part that always makes me the more, most nervous is being the uh, technical expert. Okay. Okay, so what this drawing shows is it shows where the stair would be in the red if it went up to the higher level and if it was to code. By doing that, it comes past the line of the sidewalk. It continues onto the sidewalk and up, and it becomes a long stair. It's not, it's not a comfortable stair for people to, to get up and to get into the building. It just, and, and it, it infringes on, on frankly, on uh, the public property. Um, what we did to, uh, to change this, and I'm not sure, okay, let me do this again. Let me close this. So I'll have to, I'll have to shut that down again. There. Okay, sure. Okay, so in comparison, we have the stair here that comes, the, the existing sidewalk, you go up this level, you go into the space, and what we are doing, Victoria is taking away from the inside, here is the wall of the building. She's taking away floor area from the inside of her building in order to then create the, the rest of the rise inside of the space and create this, this open area that goes up to the cupola above. And then there's the stair that goes down to the second floor. So what it does is it really makes a functional, safe, accessible entry into this building. This ends up being um, more like the kind of the, the rise of the, the the buildings on the, the upper street by, um, uh, by the, the courthouse. There's a row of townhouses that have a, a, a stairs going up to the, to the main entrance. And so we, we really have worked very, very hard on this. And we appreciate that the commission um, will allow us to be able to, to go forward with lowering this to make something that's reasonable, that makes for an excellent um, uh, way to get in and out of the building and still maintains the feeling of this, this building. Phil, you're on mute. Someday. Thanks very much, Jane. Uh, that that actually was very helpful. I know you had addressed that before in the previous meeting, but it was really good to go through it again so that uh, that other folks there, there are quite a few people uh, outside the commission also tuning in so that they understood uh, exactly why 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 that got done. Uh, are there any other commissioners who wish to speak or can we we move forward into sort of formal consideration and and votes on this? If no one else is going to speak, uh, I would ask the, the commission for a motion to find the application complete. Uh, anyone? Motion. Thank you, Hugh. May I have a second, please? I second. 
Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Uh, all in favor of the motion on the table to find the application complete, uh, please say aye. Uh, aye. Any Wait, opposed? is there going to be a contingency on the masonry? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me back off. I appreciate that, John. We have agreement, and and what we're talking about is is not a contingency. We've agreed that, and the applicant agreed, and I believe the owner agreed. If I was looking at the screen, uh, that the bottom area would be stucco, and that we're moving forward on that basis. Okay, may I, may I continue on, then uh, on on the vote for completion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed on the commission? There are none. The motion to find the application complete is approved. Uh, may I have a motion to uh, request uh, City Attorney Polidoro to prepare a certificate of appropriateness? Uh, again, it's understood and will be understood uh, that the modification uh, from today's discussion is uh, the stucco rather than the clabbered on the lower part of the building. But other than that, we're moving forward with this application as presented. Uh, motion to uh, make that request of the city attorney. Anyone? I make that. Thank you very much, Paul. And a second, please, Miranda. Done. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed on the commission? The motion is carried. The city attorney will be asked to prepare a C of A. And, and the board has determined this is a type two action. Correct, and and uh, we clearly have not waived any public hearings. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, guys. You you uh, you. This this took some time and and some energy and some focus, and I think you've come up with with a, a, an elegant solution. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, again, uh, uh, City Attorney Polidoro. <laughs> On the schedule, we should be discussing Promenade Hill Park. Uh, is it my understanding that uh, we cannot vote on anything until secret is approved? Correct. You can discuss it. Um, you can you can determine it complete pending the secret determination, so that we're prepared for the to approve it at the next meeting. Should you want to do that. Uh, I, I absolutely would if that becomes an option and the approval are in place to, to move these guys forward. It's just a huge contribution to the city and we, we need to support it. Uh, discussion uh, to the commission on, on the uh, proposal for Promenade Hill Park. Terrific. Uh, I would ask or perhaps I, I, will, I will make a motion and I'll try to replicate what Victoria said or asked her to say it again, uh, to that we find the application complete and uh, we- uh, Authorize and, preparation of C of A pending a secret determination. And we authorize preparation of a C of A pending secret determination, uh, which means potentially all things working out, we could, we could vote the C of A at our next meeting in two weeks, which would be great. Uh, can anyone make the motion that we just made? Motion. I'll make that Second. motion. I just said it. Second by John. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed on the commission? We're going to ask the city attorney to prepare then a draft C of A pending uh, disposition of CICRA, uh to be hopefully approved at the next meeting. Terrific. Thank you very much, one and all. And congratulations to the city of Hudson. We're Wonderful. Gonna... So great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. It's so nice to have your support and to be a part of this project. It really is. Vice versa. Thank you very much. All, all invited to the groundbreaking, uh, okay. right, Michael? When is that? <laughs> Hopefully uh, a sunny day in February. <laughs> all right. Congrats. Congratulations, thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thanks, bye. Uh, next order of business, uh, C of A application for 94-95 North 5th Street. Uh, the applicant I'm sure is here. Uh, just open up your, your picture and your mic and be prepared to uh, share your screen. Who's here representing 94 North 5th? Good morning, it's Andy Didio with Taconic Engineering. How are you? Hey, Andy. Good, Good to see you. you. Um, so I'll go ahead and share my screen and kind of run through 
the proposed plan. Thank you very much. So hope everybody can see that 94 to 95 North 5th Street in Hudson. Um, it's a uh, single family residence that we're hoping to do some renovation uh, and clean up. So the, um, the proposed plan, here's the survey that shows the, um, the property boundaries, the existing residence, the garage, as well as um, there's a front porch along the uh, North 5th Street side, as well as a proposed porch in the rear of the building. Um, due to um, some kind of miscommunication between us and the, uh, and the builder, um, the, uh, the front porch was actually removed. Um, it was inspected, the, uh, the floorboards of the porch were rotted as well as the, the roof rafters um, were severely rotted and uh, through discussion it was, yeah, it should be removed and then subsequently was removed um, prior to, to us coming. So um, apologize for that, but we're here to kind of show what the, what the remedy is. So here's the, this is the survey. Um, thought it was prudent to include some photos. So these were photos taken obviously before the front porch were removed. This is the front porch portion. Um, you can see some of the some of the detailed scroll work, which when that was um, when it was removed, the majority of this um, detail work was preserved and is is saved within the house, some of which um, were were damaged. So um, those can be replicated exactly because we do have uh, many of the originals. Um, so that's your that's your northwest elevation, the southwest elevation, which is actually along this um, kind of corridor along the side of the property, which you can see is here in the site plan. Um, this is from within the building, and this looks back behind in the in the back courtyard, if you will, um, along this uh, facade which is kind of your, your west facade of the rear addition. This is the back of the, of the house. So opposite uh, North 5th Street, you can see there's a, a boarded up window here. So we'll get to some of the kind of overall scheme um, and plan as we get to those drawings. Here's again, the inside corner of that um, back portion of the building. You can see there's a doorway an aerial doorway um, that used to be served by um, a, a stairway that went up that was that was removed, um, I believe, in, even before the, the current or owner purchased it. Um, and then another another doorway here that we'll address. And then this is just the um, the southeast elevation looking from Washington Street. Uh, here's the north. Northeast elevation again from Washington Street shows that front porch portion, uh, the the side bump out of the building. Here's a, a, a shot of one of the chimneys. You can see it's in pretty pretty severe disrepair in certain portions. So part of the plan will be to um, repoint, really get an assessment of whether or not they're worth saving, um, and and most likely um, deconstruct down to to the roof elevation and then rebuild. So here are the color renderings. Essentially, um, the front porch will be reconstructed as it was with the same um, front details in the columns. The, uh, the roof will be a standing seam metal roof um, in an identical configuration. Um, colors to match the existing, as far as paint colors, just for your consideration. And then this, the southwest elevation shows that rear porch. Um, that's on the inside elbow of the of the house. You'll see that in rear elevation. So here's your southeast elevation that shows that porch that's on the inside of the bend proposed. Here's that bill code door you can see uh, in the photo photograph. And then just the northeast elevation showing the showing the front porches again. So here are the the plan elevations um, again reconstructing the front porch as it was. Um, the uh, windows are proposed to be replaced with Marvin wood windows, uh, including all of the two over two windows in the um, in the house, as well as the um, attic awning windows with a Marvin wood wood window. Um, the there is that uh, side door. So here's the porch 
proposing to replace that side door that currently comes out discharges the, the building addition. There's that aerial door that will be utilized for the um, second story porch kind of deck off of the off of the new porch. There is a window that will be removed and um, patch and repair the, the siding with a bevel, beveled clabbered siding. And then here shows the um, additional kind of window and door modifications that'll take place. So there's that door. Here's the Bilco door, if you recall, I can flip back up. There's a door uh, to the right side of the Bilco door as well as um, those windows. So to serve the porch, they're proposing um, a double Marvin wood door to discharge onto the porch, which, which would eliminate uh, the window there, as well as eliminating the window adjacent to the door and replacing to match the new window um, to the, on the inside corner. So new two over two Marvin wood windows. We've got a spec uh, that will show. Here's here's an, a window opening. I think that's the one that's boarded up in the photograph that will be removed and, and sided to match the wood clabbered. And then that existing door, another doorway um, in the second story that'll, that'll be replaced with a two over two window. And then you've got a single window um, at this location, which will, which will be uh, converted to a double. And then the, due to interior configuration changes, um, some wall, new wall lines to create a, a, a better kitchen space essentially would, would um, result in the, in the narrowing of these two windows. So instead of a two over two, you'd be a one over one, but the same uh, mullions and, and um, molding around the, around the window. And again, same specification would be a wood Marvin window. So here's just a brief snap of the of the different window specs, uh, the double hung windows, the the um, the attic awning windows, wood Marvin, and then the door, which will have the the um, divisions to to kind of carry through the um, the partitions in the in the replacement windows. So you can see there's that door, some of the windows that we show. Um, in the elevations. So I'll take any questions that the board may have. Thanks very much, Andy. That was, that was very helpful. Uh, commissioners? I think no, it was great. This is John. It looks fantastic. I think it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. What a great project. And too bad about the porch, but you know, as as long as the repair is is um, identical, it'll last a lot longer this way. Yeah. And, and I just wanted to may I speak? I'm sorry, the owner. Can I just say one thing? I I do sure. apologize for the porch. Um, we really had no idea, and uh, by the time we found out, we shouldn't have taken it down. It was sort of in pieces. So, but our intent is to bring the house back to its original form as a single family home that we will uh, we will live in. Can I just make one comment? It's so such a nit as to not um, the way that those um, the way that those st front stair railings flare out. I mean, I would I would look to Chip or Paul. Like, that doesn't strike me as particularly. Uh, that would not have been original. Like we don't see that anywhere else. I I agree. I it was something that came to so that the flare looks like it's more of a mid 20th century sort of effort than uh, something original to the building. I think that typically stylistically, we, we would expect those stairs to not be flared with the handrails at an angle, but perpendicular to the handrail of the porch. Um, I, I know that there's some sidewalk, maybe, I don't know what the status of the front sidewalk is in the plan, um, but that sort of flare of the sidewalk. Well, there it is. It's a concrete sort of also one would expect to be uh, mid to early 20th century. Um, and I don't think we object to the stair not being flared. Um, and we do intend to replace the walkway 
I'm sorry, I don't know the right terminology for various things, but um, we thought we would put in some bluestone for the walkway. Great. It'll look a lot better. Yeah. So, uh, just what about the handrails at, at the steps? I guess those would be similar to what you're doing for the porch, correct? Yes, they'll be they'll be uh, they'll match essentially the porch porch railing aesthetic. That's right. I have one question about the chimney, just because you were not uh, specific about it in the presentation. You thought you were going to have to take them down and reconstruct, but you do intend to reconstruct them. Is that right? Yes. Good. Yep. Yep. Do you have any historic photographs that show the um, uh, the detailing of those chimneys? Um, it looks like they've already been altered and modified, cut back, maybe lowered some. Typically, we would expect some outward corbeling of the tops of those chimneys or banding of some nature. It would just be really nice to, if there was an historic photograph to give some credibility to a detailing that might be more uh, to the uh, style of the building um, historically. Also, while we're on this photograph, um, the double hung windows that are shown uh, on this side that are closest to the front, I, I'm confused by the meeting rails of that. Is that a is that a two over four window? I'm what what is that what is that window? I noticed it on the other side also. That's a good question. Um Laura, do you have oh well, I'm sorry. I could answer that if you wanted me. To. Yeah, these these the windows are inconsistent now. Some are yeah. are six panes, some are four panes. There's no consistency in the windows right now that are in the house. Right. Are the windows on the front of the house six pane also? Uh, I think they're four. Yeah, there are they're up on top. They're six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then okay. and then you've got and then you've just got sink two over ones down below. So the intent is to replace them all with, with matching. Yeah, two over, I would two over twos. I would I I mean I think the fact that they're light is really pretty cool um, and part of the original design of the building in the primary interior rooms of the house they used a bigger better fancier window and i think the two over four double hung uh, would be something to consider using um, consistency um, throughout the house would be it'd be it would be consistent stylistically that the front part of the house might have bigger, fancier windows than the back of the house. And, um, and the glass size tends to diminish as you go to the back of the house. They tried to use bigger glass in the front of the house. Um, so I, it looks like those windows may also be wider than the typical two over two windows, which we're seeing in the back of the house which again, would be consistent with a fancier, bigger window uh, in the main parlors in the main part of the house. Um, the windows that you're proposing to replace here on the, in this view, those one over one windows, the narrow down windows, mm. um, um, uh, typically in historic, strict historic preservation, one wouldn't necessarily like to see that. However, it's not uncommon for a window to be narrowed down or to be made modified in areas of pantries or smaller rooms. So I don't, I don't really have a problem with the one over one windows that you're proposing to replace on this elevation. Um, there, uh huh. I, I think that that's fine, but I think that you're showing a larger, in fact, in this drawing, you can see that the two over two, in fact, are larger in the front part of the building than they are in the back. And since we have the evidence, the historic evidence of the original design intent, I'd prefer that you really look at doing a two over four. And my expectation is that on the existing windows that are on the first floor that have been made into one large pane, 
that that probably was just a subsequent modification, probably the 20th century also. They just took out the four, four mullions and put in a single piece of glass. Well, I think, I think in, in the, I, I appreciate that chip and I can appreciate the, um, the consideration of that. The, the challenge there is that you don't get the full functionality of, a, of the double hung to slide all the way up. You can see these kind of two tops. You can either Correct. slide it down halfway or slide it yep. up. I think from a functional perspective, I get that that, that is probably the, the, um, the, the intent given the, the scale of the windows from the original design. But I think with the renovation to have consistency throughout the building won't impact from an aesthetic perspective. Um, won't impact. I think it'll help kind of give a cohesive feel to the whole to the whole facade and all of the windows to match. And it'll give them the functionality to be able to open the window the full half width, you know, or half half height. Yeah. Just for consideration of the commission. Anybody I else? Uh, comments? Uh, I, I just want to see if we're uh, we're on track and and review my notes from uh, from uh, uh, discussion because there's certain points that we we in fact have agreed to and then I want to come back for, for on the windows and just just see where we are uh, on on the chimney uh, uh, we're, we're asking the applicant to uh, if possible uh, identify uh, uh, any historic photos that might create an opportunity since if you are going to deconstruct and reconstruct the chimneys might give you an opportunity to uh, reintroduce uh, a bit of uh, authentic detail or design uh, in that structure. These were clearly rebuilt uh, at least once already uh, in, in uh, no specific way. Go ahead, Andy, if you're going to comment. I was just going to say, you can see a little bit of that banding that, that Chip had mentioned on the rear that had been kind of parged over. Um, so I think, uh, I don't think that's, that's, um, uh, I think it would, it, it lends itself to some of that kind of original banding. Okay. Um, that could be established when they go to repoint because the top, again, the top of that chimney, where's that photo? This, this is a bit of a mess. So when they go to reconstruct that to bump out to that width, I, I think um, we can talk with uh, with the applicant about trying to dig up some historic photos. I'm not I'm not aware of any, but at a minimum, we could um, we could show that kind of bump out to where you get like a double uh, double brick height that bands out and then a step back in. That's not uncommon that we see historic I, photos or no. If we could come to an agreement that 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 would be something that you're going to give your absolute best shot at, I'd like to include that in the in the application. I, I agree, and I think that if if photographs are available and the applicant can use them, fantastic. If there's some evidence on site uh, as you get into that, as you mentioned, Andy, um, that'd be terrific too. I don't know that we need necess I don't know that the board needs additional documentation at this time. No, no I'd like to, like to put it in the C of A. That's all. As as that that's that's uh, uh, strongly in, intent that you're going to do, and it would be be a, a nice feature on on that as you reconstruct it. Second on the on the on the flared steps, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is uh, that uh, you and the owner are comfortable uh, unflaring, and uh, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think the re the replacement of the walkway, it, the, knowing that 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 concrete will come out, it'll be nice uh, so that the port those stairs won't kind of neck into a wider walkway. The, the new bluestone can can be commensurate to the new okay. stairway. Uh, third item then would be uh, uh, the bluestone walkway, which you just mentioned, and that the 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 steps right at that front, uh, the walkway the walkway railing, excuse me, uh, is is going to uh, replicate or at least cohabit nicely with the existing railing on the rest of the house. Mm -hmm. One okay. one other comment on this photograph is the um is in fact the handrail um of the porch mm -hmm. um it stylistically it doesn't look like it's original to the house it doesn't 
I don't know what the what are the things on top of the handrail. Do we know? Yeah. Keep the riffraff out. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Is it is it like a fleur de lis or a picket yeah. point or? I think it just looks like a picket point. It almost looks okay. like two by twos that are cut at an angle. Yeah. Got it. Um, one might expect graphically, and this would be supported by historic photograph, that that handrail would be more akin to the elaborate decoration ornamentation of the bracket. Um, those huge oversized brackets are really quite spectacular and a really important part of the design of this building. And I would have expected that the handrail would have been not single pickets like is shown in this proposed work, but might be a banjo board or a slat that has a decorative silhouette uh, cut into it. Um, in the absence of having anything, uh, any historic photograph of it, you certainly would have historic um, imagery of houses of this vintage um, that could be used as a pattern for that. Um, but, uh, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting uh, withholding approval based on this, but again, uh, uh, simply that the proposed handrail um, as single space, single square splat, uh, spindles um, is, is really not appropriate stylistically to this house. Any I, that said, excuse me, that said, yeah. I think it is appropriate in the back of the house. The porch, the second floor porch that you're showing on the back of the porch, that has a more, well, you just, yeah. Um, stylistically, that is, one would expect the back porch to be more simple, um, not as elaborate, not as ornate as the front porch. Yeah, I think, I think, like you say, barring any, any historic photographs that kind of show what an original spindle um, arrangement or like you say, silhouetted board looks like, you know, really this is kind of the, this is the approach that, that we'd like to take right now. I think if, um, if the applicant is able to um, kind of take a look and see if there's an alternate spindle type that might, um, that might fit with the aesthetic of the of the house that does give it a little bit ornate i think um that's something not unlike the chimney if if we can find something that you know we could even potentially come back and just show the board uh quickly to to get your blessing but um i'd hate to have that hold up the approval uh, I, I don't think andy I don't, we're not going to hold up the approval but but it's not uncommon uh for uh things that that uh where, where there's a question you feel the question was valid and and contributed to your project to identify that uh as uh as a contingency at least in the sense that you'll take a look at it so that we can bring that up in the next meeting we're not trying to shut you down but we are trying to steer you a little bit sure okay, okay. <laughs> uh I, I don't have anything else. And commissioners, anything else we, we need to raise before we, we uh, begin to vote for, vote this forward? Um, uh, are we going to have any further discussion on the windows? Please go ahead then. Bring bring that up, Paul. Um, no, I, I, and Chip, I want to rely on you for this. That that two over four window is, is a rather unusual and a kind of unique feature, is it not? I, I think it is. It's very interesting that it survives. Um, yeah. Um, at least on the facade. I, I think I would caution from changing that. How many of them are there and what condition are they in? And, and uh, was the theory of the case simply consistency or was there another, uh, I guess, usability? Consistency, usability, um, availability, and um... Yeah, I think those three elements, they're, they're not uh, in fantastic. Let, let, me just, let me just speak to that. Uh, I, I think they could certainly be replaced with the Marvin window. It's just a matter of their configuration. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not proposing that these windows be restored in uh, their original fabric, 
but just that the configuration of the new Marvin window be it a um, uh, a um, reflect this this design. I think the matter of consistency is not a desirable goal uh, when we have the basis, the basics of this house are that the front windows are different than the back windows. So consistency is not, not an argument. Um, so I, I would think that Marvin would be available to produce these windows as easily as they've done others. Um, so. How, how many windows are we talking about? And this is strictly on the front, right? Was it, so it's eight it's, it's the front, it's, uh, Phil, it's the front and going down the sides of the front section of the building. So, I see. so Andy's bringing up this photograph now. Yeah, there are two, two here, um, and then the front uh, four above the four second story windows over the top of the porch on the first floor but but also on the first floor porch on the southwest i think it's the southwest side this this um this the, the side of this you porch. Token? the Can side you of this porch those two these two stacked the opposite side from that so oh. southwest this here elevation. you're looking here um, Along down the alley here, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've got a shot from that. Looking in at that. Uh, go back one, please. No, we don't have one standing on this porch, looking at the side of the house, the windows there. Can you this, can you this, show this. us the side with the plywood? Uh, should, yep. This here. Is that? No. Yeah. What, this is the inside elbow. So what we're looking at here, that the plywood is here. So okay. this is the inside elbow. We're Got looking okay. at Thank two you. stacked and then four along the front. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have a photo from the porch here looking at the side. I see. So the, so the photograph that you have of that side is a more detailed photograph of that, the photograph on the right-hand side. Um, is that, here. Yes, that's the bump yep, out. That's that the bump out. That's the side of the bump out, correct. Right. Yep. Um, in your front elevation drawing, we're not seeing that bump out on this drawing. Yeah, it's for some reason it didn't carry through in the model. It's we've got it here. Yes. Um, and there's a there's currently a door that discharges onto the porch, but yeah, it's, it, for Would some you reason- Would be proposing to keep that door? Yes. Yeah. Or replace it with new- Replace it with a new Marvin wood door. That's right. And, yep, to and match so it would be the right. same as the, or similar to the front door? Front door, the rear door, all the door replacements are gonna be consistent with that. Right. Yeah, with the six pane, yeah. I, I, I think in your elevation that you're, we're looking at on the bottom of this drawing here now, is it accurate that there are not windows in the front porch, in the front room? You're not showing windows. No, stay there, please. Thank you. On the southwest elevation. Oh, here. In the, yes. Are there not windows there? I haven't. I haven't seen it. Laura, do you have any? Can you chime in? Are there no windows along the? I don't think there are any windows yeah, there. I didn't think so. Um, no. Okay, because yeah. that okay. would be the place where we would expect to see those additional two over two four over windows. Fours, yeah. Yeah. No, there aren't. There aren't windows there or directly above there currently yep. in the house. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. So, getting back to uh, Phil's question, how many windows? It's two on the left-hand side, if you will, and five on the. I'm sorry, um, seven on the front. And the first floor windows may be, it looks like the first floor windows, in fact, are a different size they are, th yeah. than the second floor window. Yeah. So Andy, what, what, what's your consideration? I mean, it's an interesting point. Uh, your, your comment on, on uh, functionality is, is, is understood. Uh, I think Chip's point about about consistency also understood that 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 it can't it should not drive the whole solution. 
uh, is is there an issue, for example, in terms of, of would you consider the two over sixes, and would is there is there a compromise you need to accommodate that in terms of numbers of windows, or whatever? But are you willing to uh, preserve that feature? I guess I would I would look to the applicant. Obviously, and it's not something the board cost comes into play and in availability. Um, I know them. The, Depending on the lead time, the two over twos are uh, are more readily available than the two For over sure. fours. Um, given the given the fact that we've got modified windows on the on the front porch, those three windows, two two and one, um, you know, to do the two over twos there versus the um, versus up top, I guess if if we're getting if we're going to try and seek out the two over fours um, uh, and the window dimensions are similar and aspect ratio is similar then carrying that through to the first porch first story on that porch does make sense um, I think uh, if we could do it as a as a consideration that we try and um, suss that out between now and uh, in the next meeting and still move forward with drafting the CVA um, I think that's if the if the commission's okay with that. So I was thinking of something a little harsher than consideration. I mean, in, in uh, HPC speak, it's a contingency. It means that we would draft the C of A for vote uh, in two weeks or ask the city attorney to draft the C of A. But it, this this one's a bit bigger than than a consideration. We, yeah. we, would, we would want you to to come back and say, yeah, that's viable and 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 we're going to implement it kind of thing i i believe that's my sense of the board miranda comment yeah i just because i haven't spoken yet i i do agree with chip and i think just in general it's a unique feature of this house and the windows are proportioned to accommodate this two over four mm -hmm. so i really would hate to see that changed on the front facade Okay, um, I think in in the effort of expediency, if we just say um, yes, the seven seven uh, windows on the front, and then the two along the side of the building will be the two over fours. And then, if for some reason um, there's a major hardship, then uh, oh, we'll come better. back. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's good. Phil. Yeah. Phil. Hi, this is Craig. Uh, quick question, and just so you know, I have to run out. I just got called for an emergency, so okay. I'll follow up with you later on everything else. But a question on this application, Andy, if you can go to the northeast elevation, the existing. Yeah. I just wanted a question. I got it checked on my review. That gutter that's coming down in between the windows, mm -hmm. is that going to remain, or are they doing anything with that? Yeah, so I, now would be the time to approach that. And then, yeah, not yeah. that it's necessary, but the mechanicals of the wires and everything, are they going to be underground or are they going to be reattached there? As of right now, they'll be, they'll be reattached to the best of my okay. knowledge. Laura could chime in there on the roof. Yeah, there'll, meter. Be a, there'll be a lot less wires. This was a multifamily home. So mm -hmm. yep. it's going to be all cleaned up. I'd like them to go underground, but um, I think we just want to clean all this up. There's a lot of, wires and things going on here that are not particularly attractive. And, I think and then the, also, Andy, for the record on your proposal, you have 94-95 North 5th. Mm -hmm. For the legal record of this commission, it's actually 94-96. 94-96, wow. Go to wow. your front page. Yeah, you, you, you propose it, and it's, it's going to go into a public record, so it has to be the right address. Yep, gotcha. Okay. All right. Other than that, Phil, I'll check with you later this afternoon on everything else. Greg, on the on the roof leader, before you split, on the roof leader, it'll remain. It's just going to get straightened up. You can see it's kind of it's a little wonky, so it'll get straightened out. Okay, because on your proposal, that's I don't believe that's there, if I remember right. The elevation? No, I, I don't think it's shown on the elevation. But yeah, it's to remain. Yeah, that should be there. Something should be there indicating that. Okay. okay. Thanks. Right, with that said, I got to go, folks. I'll talk to you this afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Uh, I just want to, I do just want to say this is a terrific application. It's a great thing to see this house get back to, to the restoration that you're doing. It's fantastic. And uh, all of our, you know, 
I, I think the entire board is fully supportive of, 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 of your work here. It's fantastic. Ditto that. Well said, guys. I just want to, I'm going to quickly review the bidding and then we're, we're going to vote. I've got seven, two over six windows, a uh, banded chimney, uh, uh, straight steps in front, <laughs> loose stone walkway and uh, 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 railing in, in front consistent with the rail, railing in back. I, th I think that's, that's essentially the items. Uh, with those as part of the definition of the scope of work, uh, may I have a motion to find the application complete? I'll make that motion. Thank you very much, Paul. And a second, please. Anyone? Hugh, thank you. Uh, all in favor by voice to find the application complete? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Unanimous application is complete. Uh, given uh, the items uh, previously mentioned, which will capture uh, specifically in the C of A, uh, we uh, are voting to waive a public hearing and to request the city attorney to prepare a certificate of appropriateness for a vote at the next meeting. May I have that motion, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Paul. And a second, please. Hugh? Done. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any commissioners opposed? There are none. Unanimous. Thank you very much. We will see you guys in two weeks and, and congratulations on moving forward. Project. Thank you. Thank Great you all project. very much Best for your consideration. Luck, Thank Thanks you. so much, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Uh, 221 Allen Street. Who will be speaking for 221? Uh, we can come back to it. We're gonna we're gonna pass on 221 uh, Allen uh, Street. Pardon? Folks. Oh, sorry. Uh, two 221 Allen Street. I'm Matthew Cordone, uh, yes. an architect. So um, I'd like to just jump in about Allen Street. <laughs> oh, no, please, please do, Matthew. That's what yeah. I was looking for you to do. And, yeah, and I apologize for that. I was uh, talking to my associate, uh, um, and we are just going to share our video right now. That would be great. Yeah. Hi, folks. How are you? <laughs> Good. All right. Um, I'm just gonna briefly give you an overview. We're gonna share our screen. Excuse me, guys, I need to step away for one second. I'll be right back. Keep on going. I think you guys can move ahead, Matthew. Okay, great. We're gonna we're sharing our screen right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, so funny enough, um, this project, um, just similar to the uh, Warren Street project that we'll be presenting um, shortly, um, the, these projects are um, working with the collaboration of the State Historic Preservation Office, and we'll be submitting these projects uh, to the National Parks. Um, services for uh, historic tax credits. Um, the, um, the, the, the goal is to restore this, this project back to um, an historically appropriate period. And um, right here, you can, you can share our screen now. Um, you can see the existing conditions of this building. Uh, about a year or so ago, the building did sustain a fire, which I'm sure you folks um, are aware of. Um, the uh, our client, who's, um, who has charged us with the, uh, with the task of um, restoration, had asked us to um, maintain the, um, the, the, the building type, which is um, uh, residential, um, with uh, four stories. I'm sorry, three stories, three stories with six apartments. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the existing conditions here, there are some historic elements that we are looking to, pull back, to, to bring back. Um, most importantly, around the entry portico, you can see the original framing and molding around the, uh, the double doors. This building is a twin building, um, kind of like a double wide. So um, our goal is to kind of maintain that. Um, we can scroll down to the um, interior. So you know, I know you guys aren't too interested in the interiors, but I do want to share some of the historical elements that we found inside. Um, the historical newel post and staircase does exist. 
and we will be um, restoring all, all of that area. Um, cool. Even the moldings that we found that we believe to be original will come to be restoring as well. And, the, and, and this is a great shot of what the, um, the entry uh, vestibule looks like. It's, um, you can see the transom above and the two double uh, side lights on uh, that plank door that was once removed. We're gonna be restoring all of that so that we have the double side lights and the transom, and we'll be putting in a historic appropriate door as well. It's called the innovation. Um, so just a quick couple images of the fire that had that occurred. We did lose some of the um, some interior material, but the exterior is in very good shape. So uh, we're hoping to, to get a, a nice restoration on this job. Um, again, some more images of the exterior. Um, you can see the profile in the second photograph to the left. You can see the, the ghosting of the, of the original profile of the front door. We did um, a little investigation throughout Hudson and we did discover um, a, a neighborhood um, a building, 225 Union Street, that has a very similar uh, approach to how our front entry is going to be. So we showed that as an example of what we're proposing to do um, at the entry. Of course, we'll have two doors that will be in this uh, image that you can see, the fourth image in this, in this sheet. And um, additionally, um, if you look at the existing condition on the left hand side, drawing one of the sheet, you'll notice that there are um, a few areas where windows were once boarded up. Um, and the reason why they were boarded up is um, circulation had changed inside the apartment building so much that these windows were no longer necessary at the time of, um, of the renovation. We're proposing to restore those windows back to uh, recreate that original um, rhythm of the front facade. So you'll see three new windows that we are proposing. Uh, the new, we're gonna replace the windows 100% throughout the entire building. Um, the windows that we are proposing are um, what we believe to be the historically appropriate window, which is the two over two double hung. Um, the front and then the transoms above would be um, would, would have a, um, a Munson bar in the middle to, to make it two. Um, and these will be operable as well. There'll be there'll be a, a, a two um, casement style window because of the operable capacity. Um, what we want to uh, point out as well is that we uh, we're going to remove all of the vinyl siding from this building. The front facade we are to put in new uh, cedar uh, upward siding to kind of match what we feel is the historically appropriate uh, solution for this um, demonstration. Um, as we do some demolition, we will also be opening up some of the final siding to see if we can find the original profiles of the um, original clapboard siding. Uh, should we find um, anything um, uh, of, uh, of historical uh, value, we will be working. And um, so the rear of the building, um, originally uh, the, the rear of the building was just flat um, back elevation. When the apartment, when the building was um, converted into a multi-family apartment building, at some time they uh, created a fire escape and, and that's referenced in drawing one of, uh, of this sheet. There's a fire escape that landed on top of a small addition that was bumped out of the back of the building. We are proposing to remove that fire escape and that, that bump out and to create a proper um, legal code, uh, code legal um, exterior stair that brings folks out of the building uh, as the second means of ingress. Um, this would be a wood structure to complement the existing building. Um, Again, the back windows will be a two over two to, to match the, uh, the, the historic um, evidence that we found that these are original two over two windows. Um, and uh, most of the damage that occurred during the fire, it did happen in this area we're working on this, um, this uh, staircase, this exterior staircase. So we'll be able to um, mend into the building and uh, secure this new structure into an area where uh, Field is, uh, is a logical place to, 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 to place this uh, as a vision. And um, just want to show you some of the renderings and the color palette that we are hoping to, uh, to restore this to. 
Oh, actually, before I do that, I do want to mention um, that we did do um, some, some details of our windows and our, uh, our front entry. So similar to what I had mentioned earlier about that uh, photograph, we are trying to um, replicate that uh, historically appropriate uh, transom two side light single door. We're using a six panel door um, with uh, historically appropriate hardware. Um, drawings above indicate the window um, as I described the two open and double line and the uh, center line Martin bar on the aqua bowl um, is the window. This is a proposed color rendering that we are um, uh, ho hoping to, uh, to, to use. Um, we're using a, um, a, a blue for the clapper with a, uh, with, with a gray um, uh, trim uh, around the doors and the, and the windows itself. The, um, the, 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 this, the roof would be a asphalt shingle roof um, to match what is existing there um, today. And this is another option too. This is a little bit more similar to what we have on site today with the white vinyl siding. Um, you know, this, this would be uh, taking advantage of uh, using kind of that similar palette um, and using a Wickham uh, green, I'm uh, sorry, Wickham gray um, color uh, for, the, uh, for the clapboard and then doing the trim in the uh, end. Comments, questions? I think it looks terrific. Thank you. Yes, it absolutely is terrific. Um, wonderful to see uh, uh, this work being done. If you could just go back one uh, drawing, I think to, you, sh you were so showing some window. There we go. In the upper left-hand corner of this drawing, you're showing uh, some proposed trim around the two over two windows and not quite sure if that's diagrammatic or if that trim the sill and and head and jam trim is that based on any uh, evidence of of uh, on site of the, of the trim of the building or is this more diagrammatic very good question it is it is more of a diagrammatic um, trim we're hoping to, once we start demolition, we're hoping to remove some of the um, vinyl siding and lack of a better word, crack that's on the building and still yeah. find the original profiles. Um, I, I think it's terrific that you are at, um, restoring the Greek revival uh, trim at the, mm -hmm. at the doors. I'm just proposing that as you go through this and find more evidence uh, that the window trim and the corner boards and so forth would be, could, could very well be found underneath uh, some of that vinyl siding. Yeah, we're, we're hoping it's there. We, we are confident that there are, there are um, um, elements of that original sill condition. Um, yeah. We just, we just wanted to be careful before we, um, you know, we don't want to assume anything. Sure. I, I want to thank you for the thoroughness of your application. I love mm. that you've uh, revealed um, uh, uh, the floor plans and the concept uh, for the use of the building, it's fantastic. Um, uh, the color uh, schemes are not part of our jurisdiction. Uh, however, it, it, thank you very much for sharing that with us. Thank you. I have just one question, and maybe this is partly a question for Chip. Uh, on the slide that you're showing right now, the existing doors have an oval woodwork that has sort of a Victorian look to it as opposed to the panel doors that you're proposing to replace it with. And while I think the panel doors are very handsome, I wonder if that oval woodwork is original or something that should be given consideration. Uh, after a careful study of the building, we, um, we, are, we, are, we believe that these um, oval uh, woodwork doors are not original. Mm -hmm. um, they were uh, something that was put um, some, sometime um, in, in the building's history. The indications of the side light that we have here and um, the back of this of, of that old door is in fact you know, not even analyzed or, or uh, of a significant um, style. So 
we're pretty confident that it it's really not seemed to suit the Greek revival style, but I just wondered about it. Thank you. Yeah, no, no it's a good question because at first we were concerned about them and, we, and if they were original, we would want to keep them, but it just, it was such a mismatch and then upon further investigation, mm -hmm. we realized they were not original. In this photograph that you have, or this drawing that you have up right now, the photograph of, of 225 Union Street shows a transom with a large center panel flanked by two uh, s smaller side lights, if you will, yeah. that's in the transom. And in the previous photograph that you just showed of the interior of that, uh, which shows the flush panel door, I, I wonder if that, do you believe that transom to be original to the, to the building? I, I, I believe it is, um, judging yeah. from the way that the paint is on, on it. And now those um, those mountain bars are received into the framing. I believe that it is original. Yeah, are you're planning to retain or restore that that transom in that configuration? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I think it's terrific. Uh, um, it, it's a it's a it's a beautiful element of um, that transom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, could could you just take a second? I'm trying to. Uh, on, I'm sure you explained it, and and uh, but appreciate a little repetition. Uh, at at this time, the house uh, is uh, wood clabbered and and vinyl covered siding. That's correct. Yes, um, I'm sure there's there's actually a few layers of um, of siding on top of the original clapboard, um, but currently in its configuration, you see the vinyl siding. How do you uh, think it you'll be able to phase the work uh, in in terms of of uh, removing the vinyl and uh, in theory th there may be some indications of some interesting detail underneath. Uh, how how are you thinking of phasing that? Well, the the, the first the, the first uh, phase would be a, a investigative probing to make sure that when we start removing this stuff, we're not damaging any historic material behind it. Once we have a sense of um, what what's behind it and, and, and how far we can go, then we'll, we'll proceed with a, a full removal of, of these cladding finishes. Um, but usually on a project like this, what we do is we probe around two or three of the windows. We certainly um, carefully pull around that portico or that entryway. We do know that, that exists. Um, and, and that's how we do it. Would you have an opportunity uh, within uh, a pretty short time frame to do some of that exploration so that we could we could frame that as information that might come back to us two weeks from now? We can do some more exploratory uh, probes. Um, you know, we did remove some of the uh, siding on the back of the building. Um, and it, it, can you scroll to the uh, upstairs the fire damages? The interior, yeah, in the interior. So um, I mean, we don't have an example of it here, but we do have um, some images that last time we were on site uh, where the fire damage is, you can actually see the wall assembly. Um, you know, there's like a, um, a, a combination of wood framing and a little bit of, um, of, of masonry and fire blocking. And uh, you see the substrate, and you get a hint of what that original profile is. Um, we can more than happy, we'd be more than happy to uh, uh, submit uh, additional photographs of what we truly think is behind that um, for the next time. In terms of uh, what is underneath the vinyl, it's your expectation that there may be uh, uh, layers of, of stuff that uh, that got attached over time that were, were not part of the original uh, uh, exterior siding? It is my belief that that is correct. Yeah, we did, as I mentioned before, on the back of the building, we did remove some Vinyl siding. You did see, you did see the, the the styrofoam backer that's consistent with vinyl siding, and then we also saw some asphalt uh, uh, shingle material. So I, I think at the very least there are uh, two layers of siding, at least in the back. And what's your expectation of how far deep you're going to go in terms of removal? Uh, well, we'll remove uh, all of that excess material, and then we can determine what shape the uh, the, the, the siding is in the back. 
uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the original site in here is in. If it's uh, salvageable, we'll, um, we'll restore it as much as we can uh, for the guidelines of the State Historic Preservation Office. Um, should parts of it or, or, or areas be not restorable, we will have to um, uh, replace it in time and, and, and blend and match it. Okay. Thank you very much. That, that uh, perfect explanation, that's very helpful. Anyone else on the commission or, or can we uh, trundle forward? Um, uh, Carol just sent uh, a message to everyone that the existing front doors of this building were removed by the previous owner and were discarded by the previous owner, but the HPC forced the owner to reproduce the doors, which are the ones there now. So they may not be a very accurate uh, restoration because it looks like the interior, it looks like they may have just applied trim over a slab door yeah. that you can see from the interior, but there may be some evidence. Uh, there may be parts of that door and stylistically, as Miranda points out, um, it, there may be some remnant of a, of, a, of a stylistically appropriate design there that would be, uh, uh, would be, would be valuable to, to, to research and understand more. Yeah, we'd be more than happy to, to look into that and see if we can get some more information on it. I guess to me, the question is, it seems that the work that you're doing is really restoring this to the Greek revival style, which there's so many elements of it that it's logical to believe that that was the original style of the building, especially the transom that we've been looking at. So I wonder whether it's actually, even though the, there were once Victorian doors on it, it doesn't really go with the Greek revival style and maybe going to the panel door is a better solution. I don't know what the other commissioners think. I agree. Yeah. I, I just think it's worth uh, further study. I agree with, I agree with what you just said for sure. It may be more appropriate to do the panel doors. One other thing that one might discover when you remove the vinyl siding is that the attic windows in the Greek Revival would typically have a flat, continuous trim from side to side that the horizontal siding would not go up in between those windows. So it's like a, this big entablature uh, mm -hmm. under the right. roof. That's right. And I, I, I expect that you will find evidence of that if there is siding there, um, uh, original siding is underneath the vinyl. But I think stylistically, even if you don't find it, it should be considered um, just because it's so much part of the Greek revival. I, I agree. And in fact, in our next presentation, the Warren Street property, you'll have to see that uh, in the tablet that you're referring to. Okay. We'd be more than happy to explore that as well. Cool. Uh, if if there there are no other questions and comments, I just want to see if if there's a way to summarize uh, uh, a couple of points. Basically, we're putting a bit of a uh, burden on you guys within a somewhat short period of time, but but it's it it's probably the most coherent way to move you forward. Uh, otherwise, we we'd we'd have to regroup and kind of begin again. You are going to take a look at uh, at a bunch of things. Uh, the, the discussion on the doors that we just had, uh, attic windows, uh, do some exploration uh, by removing some of the vinyl, uh, particularly around the windows or areas where there would be detail uh, and identify any information you can glean from that that would inform you uh, going forward. Uh, is that fair or, or did I miss anything? Okay. So within those uh, considerations and expectations, uh, the best way guys would be to, as soon as you have information, get it to Craig. He will share it either with the whole commission real quick or with me and we'll get it out to everybody before the meeting. 
uh, so that we're, we're not starting from scratch. We understand exactly uh, what you're thinking, what you've discovered, uh, if that's workable. Uh, with 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 that information, uh, may I have a motion to find the uh, the application complete, understanding that uh, we're going to be looking for additional information and detail based on the exploration described of uh, 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 doors uh, on what's underneath the vinyl, et cetera, et cetera, uh, prior to the next meeting. Uh, could anyone make that motion? I'll make that motion. Thank you very much, Paul. And a second, please. Second. Thank you, Miranda. All in favor, aye. 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 Any commissioners opposed? Uh, that finding is done. Uh, may I have a motion to uh, waive a public hearing uh, and ask uh, City Attorney Polidoro to prepare a certificate of appropriateness for the next meeting, understanding that uh, we will have uh, during the course of the next two weeks uh, additional information that may need be incorporated uh, into the specifications in that certificate of appropriateness in a real hurry, but that, that's a good thing uh, because it means we're, we're progressing towards the, you know, as much integrity as we can have in this reconstruction. Uh, may I have that motion, please? I'll make that motion. And a second, please. Second. Thank you very much, John. All in favor, please say aye. 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 None are opposed, unanimous. So thank you very much. Thank you guys for, for a terrific plan. And uh, uh, if you can, I know it's a bit of a burden, but weather, weather permitting, please come back to Craig with as much information as you can glean between now and the next meeting. Sure thing. Cool. Uh, we are at uh, 522 Warren Street. Uh, who's here to speak for 522? And there we go, a better view. Who's here to represent 522 Warren? Uh, going once, going twice. Uh, we had a uh, application that Craig sent me, uh, uh, I think may maybe as, as recently as last night, but there's a, there's a bit of urgent work uh, in terms of, of roof leakage and, and other such things. And that is 240 Warren Street, which was not on the original agenda, but I did add it at Craig's request. Who's here to speak for 240 Warren? Uh, I am. This is Joe Jackson. It's actually uh, 240 Union Street, not, not Warren Street. I'm sorry, 240 Union. I, I, I slipped on that. That's what I had written down. So we got it right. I said it wrong. Thank you. Uh, Please, yeah, thank, sure. Yeah. Thank you for hearing me at the, at the last minute here. Um, I'm just going to uh, share the screen. Um, just one second. Okay. Uh, so um, my wife and I just bought this house in September at 240 Union and um, just after purchasing it discovered that the roof is leaking um, and it's caused some mold growth in the walls. Um, so we had a contractor come and look at it and his recommendation is to uh, replace part of the roof. So this image here uh, shows the, the entire house. The portion that I circled is the portion that needs to be replaced. So it's the rear portion um, away from Union Street. Uh, the, this is a, just a picture of the front of the house. So this front portion of the roof is not going to be touched. Uh, the portion that you can see there is, is part of what will be replaced. Um, and, and this is another angle. Uh, our intention is to keep it exactly as it looks right now, except for two things. Uh, so one thing is there's, there's a chimney here that is not in use and that Craig told me is actually illegal anyway. Um, and that's part of the reason that the roof is leaking because there are some uh, holes surrounding the chimney. Um, and so we'd like to eliminate that. And then the second thing is um, just to extend. So if you look on the, on the left and right side of the, this portion of the roof to extend the overhang, which is currently six inches, um, extend it to 12 inches in order to accommodate venting in the soffit, uh, which our contractor says that we need in order to ensure that the, the roof can breathe properly um, so that moisture doesn't build up and, and mold doesn't uh, come back. So um, 
the, the material that we're planning on using for the soffit is um, beadboard, which is the same material that's used um, right here on the, uh, under the overhang on the back porch. Um, and then just lastly, the, the color that we're using for the shingles, which will be asphalt shingles, is, um, is a dark gray color that, as far as we can tell, is very similar to the existing color um, that's being used. Thank you very much, Joe. So there, there is, there's little or none of this. It's essentially new construction. It's essentially a repair, and it's essentially with like-for-like -like materials. That's that's correct. Okay, commissioners, any comment, or should should we move forward? But by the way, the I just got a, a note from uh, uh, Five People <laughs> Warren. Uh, they were on mute, so they will be coming back after we finish. Uh, 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 discussing uh, 240 yeah, Okay. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments or uh, may I have a motion to find the application complete? I'll make that motion. Thank you very much. And a second by Hugh, all in favor by voice. Aye. Are there any opposed? May I have a motion to uh, move forward with a wave of public hearing, move forward with this uh, repair at uh, 240 Union uh, and ask the city attorney to prepare a C of A. Anyone? I'll make that, uh, Phil. Thank you very much, Paul. Miranda, second. All in favor by voice? Aye. Are Aye. there any commissioners opposed? None opposed. The city attorney will prepare a C of A, uh, which we'll vote on in the next meeting. So, Joe, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Really appreciate right. it. Take care. Uh, so I missed uh, last time, or or they were they were on mute. Uh, five two two Warren. Hi. Hi. This is this is Susanna Stoppard from Studio Sun. Where the um, architects. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Someone. Anyways, my Zoom my Zoom issues. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, staying on this call to to hear us right at the end. Um, I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Is that is that okay? Please do. Please do. Great. Um, let's see. Files. Huh. Desktop. Of course, this is going to take a minute. I apologize. Take take um, your time. We've all been there. Will not be able to record the comment. Okay. This is insane. Okay, I have uh, I think that last click didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> I had to leave to be able to come back. Um, apparently it's going to work this time, I promise. Here we go. Okay, so um, it's, it's about 522 Warren Street and I think you all have had a moment to review uh, what we sent um, and predominantly it's concerning the um, accessory dwelling unit that and, and the the car old carriage house that was on Prison Alley. And this is an image of the, ex of the facade as it is now. You can see these um, small windows and a um, garage door. I think what, what isn't shown in this photograph, which is present now, is that there is um, a lintel underneath this ivy that needs to be replaced. As you can see, the um, the clapboard is is peeling and in places it's it's cracked and coming apart and then there is a CMU block um, that frames the lower level the upper level is framed in in a two by six framing at present there's no insulation in the upper level or the lower level and there's no insulation on the exterior of the building um, which kind of yield some of the next decisions that, that, that follow in terms of replacing the siding in its totality. Um, this is an image showing the interior courtyard and um, a Juliet balcony that had been installed on the upper level that is in need of some restoration. 
Um, and then the, the existing interior entrance um, with this very sweet um, awning. Um, so yeah, that's the building. The plan, this is the existing plan that shows that it's just an open garage downstairs and then the upstairs is um, unfinished. It's two by four framing, two by six framing with building paper, nothing on the interiors in terms of, in, in terms of chipboard or electrical. Um, this is the demolition plan, which, which shows that we are proposing making an opening to mimic the existing Juliet balcony opening on the prison alley side. And then here we will just be replacing the existing um, garage door in the same location um, and, and creating another opening on, on, on the alley, interior alley side. Um, just to quickly review the plans, this would then allow us to have another entrance to the upper level and then the upper level becomes a self-contained unit, hopefully down the road. Um, in terms of exterior elevations, I think this probably uh, shows what our intention is. Here you can see in the bottom right-hand corner in drawing one, the existing CMU block and then the, the cladding above and the existing garage door and these, these smaller windows. Um, I should mention that all the windows and the doors have rotted out and so need to be replaced um, from a thermal perspective and from a safety perspective. Um, what we're proposing <coughs> is recladding the entire building um, in a vertical siding, enlarging the windows and installing a new Juliet balcony on, on the prison alley side. Uh, we would also replace the, the garage door with a, with a new garage door and um, restore uh, and, and replace the existing Juliet balcony windows on the courtyard interior as well. Um, I should say that the applicant, uh, GJ Hoffman, who I, you know is pretty new to Hudson, um, but he is he's very open to um, ideas and suggestions. This is uh, perhaps not using the double hung window and instead doing a push out casement from a insulation and thermal efficiency perspective might be less appealing to you all than having a double hung window. I think things like that, they would, he would be very open to. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a pretty self-contained uh, project that, I mean, for, for adjacencies along Prison Alley, I think you all know that it's a pretty, um, inconsistent lot of, of buildings. You know, there, there's a lot of variety along that street, but um, yeah, so this is what we're proposing. We're proposing also placing, replacing with a um, steel siding, but of course we're also open if, if a preference is for a horizontal hardy board instead of a vertical steel, um, we're very happy to hear that as well. And um, I think that's, that's it, unless, I mean, of course, any questions, but I wanted to keep it brief because I keep disappearing. Susanna, don't, don't disappear. Do you, do you have uh, uh, any additional photographs you could share of any of the adjacent structures on, 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 uh, on, uh, on the alley? Um, yeah. Not, I mean, we can Google map it as well, frankly, but if you have them, it would be handy. Can I... Yeah, well, I have, I have adjacent, I have, let me see, are you on the desktop with me? We're, you're sharing your desktop with us, yeah. Okay, super. So, um, this is, these are a selection of images that um, the applicant shared with us from the alley. The drawing is still up, the pictures haven't come up yet. Okay, super. Let's see, and that's also... Maybe go to Zoom for a change. Share screen. So this is this is a photograph that the applicant wanted us to share with you from um, Prison Alley. They felt the look and feel. I mean, I think what we'd end up doing would be. Uh, tidier perhaps, 
but the idea of something that is that might have vertical instead of horizontal siding and maybe something that might be finished in a darker rather than a lighter color, although that, of course, um, is up for discussion. Susanna, is that metal or, or wood? No, this is wood. Okay, thank you. Um, I have, I'll, I'll send some metal siding, but they're pretty bad looking ones. Let's see. But metal was one of the considerations you had, or did I imagine yes, that? Yes, metal is one of the considerations, um, but we also know that it's a little bit, and maybe I'll show the product to you because there's nothing if not full transparency. Um, this is the product that they would like to use. But again, we are very happy. It's called color, color bond steel. So it would be a more contemporary feel um, than, you know, probably speaking more to the industrial type of building that also populates Prison Alley, as well as the, the coach house typology that, that is there. Um, what else can I show you? Would you like to take, would you like to take a Google, Google walk down Prison Alley? Uh, if, if you wouldn't mind, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to see just sort of what's around you. And, and yeah. I know the alley very well. I'm about 75 feet away from it. So absolutely. One second. A range of possibilities. Switch my screen again. So this is, uh, this is the rear of 522 and you'll see that there's a, a lintel here that's, um, cracked and needs to be replaced. And then this quite pretty great gate that we would leave. Um, this is the adjacent building that I think, you know, has a double hung window and is slightly difficult to hear. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the typology that's more in keeping with historic. And then um, going this way, there is a brick building. And then I think if we go the other direction, just to... Um, there are, you know, there are clearly these kinds of structures as well, which are um, more informal. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's very helpful. Thank you, if you don't mind. That was very useful. Let's see. Folks? Could, could you show the photograph of the of the Juliet balcony that the, you said was a lovely the existing? What is that a recycled um, ironwork from some other era? Yeah, I think this this building really you know it's it has a CMU block found you know fundamental elements. I don't think it's it was historic yeah. in this incarnation. I think it has been the gathering of different pieces along the way. As I understand it, the previous um, owner was a, a light maker and he used this as his workshop. Um, and I think maybe made a lot of these elements himself, the, the, the gate on Prison Alley and then this ironwork here and then above. That makes sense. I mean, to my, I mean, given the CMU bottom of the building, it's clearly, as Susanna said, it's not a, a historic carriage house that has been remodeled in some way. It's a 20th century structure. Um, and I think that the proposed plan maintains the scale and silhouette of the existing building. It adds some symmetry, which is 
in my opinion, not a bad thing. Um, and I think it's, for me personally, since it was not a historic building to begin with, I think it's fine to make it look more contemporary 21st century. But I'm happy to discuss that, but I think this is a good proposal. I agree. Cool. So defi defined as we just need to be specific because there were some options and in, in, in the implications of that in, in, in terms of, I guess, the siding, uh, Susanna had mentioned that there were options in both material, vertical, horizontal. Uh, do the commissioners have, a, I mean, if we're, if we're going to give- In my opinion, since I started the discussion, I think that the proposal is consistent, somewhat industrial, 21st century, contemporary, and I think it's, it's suitable. I wouldn't try to get them to do it horizontal or use, you know- Cool board or anything else. I think it, it's a good proposal as it is, and it's not a building that that has historic integrity that we need to preserve. Okay. I agree completely. Um, I, I kind of hate to see the handcrafted Juliet balcony go uh, <laughs> from the courtyard side, simply because part of the history of this building and part of the history of Hudson and and, and this particular property is that there was a handcrafted artisan that put this together. We're maintaining the gate, we're maintaining the, the, um, uh, the canopy over the courtyard door. Um, uh, the, the use of, I'm, I'm all good with everything except the Juliet balcony. <laughs> uh, I love keeping it on the courtyard side and it would be terrific if on the, um, um, if on the prison alley side, if, if, if it were something that were also idiosyncratic, one-off, handcrafted, uh, not um, your, your basic steel cable or whatever you're proposing there. But that's just, you know, that's just me. It's a good proposal. I would second, I would second what Miranda said. I think it's great. I think it's comp very appropriate. I don't have... I like what Chip said, but I wouldn't make that a deal breaker for my vote by any means. Susanna, any, any comment on on uh, what what Chip had suggested about the Juliet? And I, I'm I, I would recognize the commission's not trying to make it a deal breaker, but if it's something you want to implement, I'd like to incorporate that in the CV. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a lovely idea too. I think the only um, issue we've had with it and we will have with it moving forward unless we can get Craig to agree is that it's not code compliant from a safety perspective um, because it is so low. Um, but maybe, you know, may, maybe there's some kind of workaround. I, I would hate to do something Frankensteinian to it in order to make it no. comply. So why, why don't we make that a contingent uh, thing for you to explore depending on codes finding? Obviously, we're not gonna propose that you put something in that's not code and we're not gonna take it any further than that. Okay, uh, that sounds good, I like it too. Okay, that would be very helpful. Uh, given that uh, contingency uh, pending on code relative to the Juliet balcony, uh, may I have a motion to find the uh, application complete? I'll move. Miranda does. And a second, please, John. Thank you so much. Uh, may I have a, a vote on complete application? All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? None. Applications complete. Uh, we uh, are going to then request the city attorney to prepare a certificate sure. of appropriateness. Cool. We have a public hearing. And there will be a uh, contingency relative to the to the uh, Juliet balcony, which will get resolved by code. Craig will get back to us. I'll get back to the commission. Uh, all in favor of the motion to move forward with preparation of a C of A, uh, or uh, we'll make that motion. Forgive me, John. Thank you. A second. Second. Second, Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? None. Thank you. So Susanna, stay in touch with Craig on that. Uh, we're not asking you to break code or do do any bad things. It, I, I think Chip's idea of idiosyncratic 
and you know history is cool but but if the ed, but if there's not a way to do it don't do it if there is a way it'd be neat cool uh, amazing that's our story and we'll see you in two weeks thank you so much i really appreciate it sorry for my good luck technical difficulties good fun uh, phil i I'd like to interrupt you. I'm very sorry to say that I have a I have to leave at 12:30. I didn't anticipate this going this long. Uh, if you and if you and Miranda and and Hugh and Chip remain, you'll have a quorum. We're we're good. We completed the agenda. Oh, sorry. Hey, um, I'm, I'm yeah, still here for 11 Warren Street. Pardon? Oh, I'm still here for 211 Warren Street. We did not complete the agenda, <laughs> but well, I can make it minutes. Minutes. <laughs> Adam, where were you? I'm sorry. I thought I thought I'd called out the address. Oh no, or right, I didn't hear it. <laughs> okay. Um, I can but, I can make this super quick. Um, we have a quorum. There's no worries. Go forth and and okay. explain what you want to build. Okay, and hopefully I can figure out the screen sharing. So, um, two eleven Warren Street. I'm Adam Katzman with Autonomous Energies. I'm the solar contractor working on oh, the solar project. panels. Got it. Um. The, the, it's new construction, Craig Tuman's project. Uh, I believe you all are familiar with the project. It already went through and got approved is my understanding uh, with speaking for, with Phil, but You're for correct. solar was not included on that. So we're circling back around um, to get that aspect of the project approved. I'm gonna attempt to share my screen. <clears throat> Am I doing it right now? Are you seeing my screen? You're yes. sharing. Okay, cool. So um, these are renderings that were already shared with you. This is from Warren Street. You're seeing the building right here. Um, this is the north side of the building. The solar will be on the back side. So this is from Cherry Alley that you're seeing the back side of the building. Um, here's our site plan. So you see Warren Street here. Um, this is the north facing roof, the Warren Street facing roof. The solar will be on the back. Um, they're going for what's called net zero. Um, so they are trying to, it's a passive house construction and they want to be providing as much electricity as they'll be using to feed the um, apartment in the, in the second story of the building. So we've um, got our solar right back here, the deck, the backyard. Um, you can see a little note if I can move it over here. This is just showing the height off of the roof. So it's it's pretty streamlined. It's it's a standing sea metal roof. Um, it's a little bit variable, but it's new construction. So we'll probably won't be more than five inches off the top of the roof deck with the panels. Um, it says five to six on the site plan, but most likely we'll, we'll obviously keep it as low as we can. And with new construction, we should probably be able to keep it down to five. Um, here's a rendering that they put together of the array on the back, um, on the back side of that building. Um, it's a 10.8 kilowatt system. Um, it's 30 solar panels, uh, and that is expected to produce enough electricity for a hundred percent of the usage in the, uh, in the apartment. Okay. Are there any questions on that? Yeah, you're saying usage in the apartment, but not, but that's just the second floor, not the, not the first floor. Correct. Okay. Uh, if are uh, again, are, are there are there further questions? If if there there's not, I'm um, uh, comfortable asking for a motion to find the application complete for solar panels. Uh, anyone make that motion? I do. Thank you very much. Uh, I will second. I haven't worked enough all day. Uh, so uh, made and second. Uh, all in favor to find the application complete by voice. Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? There are none. Application complete. A motion to waive a public hearing and to request uh, the city attorney to prepare a certificate of appropriateness. Anyone? So moved. Thank you, Miranda, and second by Hugh. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? There are none. Unanimous. Adam, you will have a C of A in two weeks. Great. Thank you so much. 
You're very Bill, it looks like there is another agenda item. Is 205 on there? Yeah, I thought we covered that. 205, 207, Warren. Yeah. We did not. <laughs> no. It's us again now. Hi, folks. <laughs> These guys. <laughs> okay. You're back. All right. No, no, no. That's, that's all right. <laughs> So similar to Allen Street Project, this is going to be a project that we are in collaboration with the State Historic Preservation Office. And we are in um, search for uh, National uh, Preservation Park Service. I'm sorry, guys. Whoever has their, their phone on, could they please mute? Oh, okay. Hang on one second. Small tile. 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 Small you're good. I don't know what that was in the background. Go we on. We have uh, we have multiple Zoom meetings going on in our office right now. So, <laughs> all right. So, so I'm going to let uh, Sokol, uh, my uh, project manager, uh, present this one. Give my lips a break. So similar to the other project, um, 205 Warren Street, it's um, a Greek revival, uh, three stories. Uh, they will be restoring to its original uh, look, and. Um, this project is located in between 2nd Street and 3rd Street on Warren Street. And at some point it was believed that the uh, first floor may have been used as commercial. Um, as right now, uh, the building is a four unit apartment and we're converting into a five unit apartment. And give you a little brief, similar to the other project of the interior. So what makes us believe that this was a uh, commercial space was this uh, tin ceiling on the first floor uh, that we're hoping to preserve. Um, also the, the stairs, they're original. Um, that's something that is gonna stay as well and be restored. Um, in a lot, um, also the front door, um, we believe that this was changed um, throughout the time. Um, but on the interior, we do have this um, three by five divide lights uh, that we feel it's original and we, we're hoping to preserve. Okay. On the second um, story, this is where we found the original facade that we mentioned before. And this is located on this uh, deck area here. Um, when we removed the vinyl facade, we, were, uh, we found that the wood clad board was uh, hidden behind it. And we believe this happens throughout the whole building. Um, and then the attic is something that we're hoping to convert into an apartment. Um, right now, um, it's access through a access panel on this area here. And we're hoping to present a staircase that we will uh, mimic the staircase that's original. And we'll use that detail to um, create a new staircase that will lead you to the third floor. Um, in addition to that, um, we do propose um, a dormer on the back, and that's because uh, once we introduce this um, apartment in order to get the light and air and also the headroom, um, we will need to propose a dormer which would be on the rear facade and won't be visible from the front. Um, Um, on the first floor, um, these windows were replaced with um, retrofit vinyl windows. Um, those will be replaced. However, on the second floor, um, the original wood windows are still um, intact and those will remain and be repaired in kind. Um, the, uh, the portico will remain, will be restored, um, as well as the, the threshold here. And a um, few yeah. renderings just similar to the other project. Uh, we are using similar uh, Benjamin Moore historic uh, appropriate colors. And they will, we will use the same language. Wow. Is that background noise in your office or is it uh, a guest on, uh, on one of the other lines? I, I driving me crazy. It's not. Is, are there voices going on in your office or are you cool? Uh, yeah, hang on one second. I'm going to try to lower the thing.
you're uh, muted now. Hey guys, I apologize for that. We, you know, in the world of um, COVID-19, we have uh, issues with uh, multiple meetings going on at the same time. Um, we'll try to keep uh, the, um, the, the other conversation a little bit lower, okay? Thank you. Okay, so uh, just to touch base on what Sokol had mentioned earlier, um, again, this is the same uh, 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 approach that we're using for Allen Street. We have um, um, the, the Greek Revival. We have the, the vinyl siding, which we're going to remove. We know what the uh, profiles are for the cedar clapboard behind uh, the vinyl siding. We're going to replicate that. Um, in addition, going back to the front elevation, you had mentioned that um, above the, um, uh, of the attic windows, we do have that, um, that detailing that um, you thought would be in the Allen Street project. So we, we, will, um, we will be continuing uh, with, with that detail. Would, would you be able to show the proposed rear elevation? Um, it's not clear what you're doing there with the stairs and egress as you had shown in the other uh, okay. projects. All right. So we can expand on that a little bit. We can expand on that a little bit. Um, what we're doing here, but currently there are um, wooden stairs in the back of this building. We are restoring them and refurbishing them um, as they are now in the pine. Um, if you look at the proposed elevation here, drawing number two, you'll see that we, 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 uh, we keep that same configuration, right? So the wooden stairs that, that are existing now, which you can see in these photographs, are in place. Um, the, uh, the, thing, uh, um, the manipulation of the back of the elevation uh, has to do with uh, raising the roof up here. Now, keep in mind, we, the building existing does have an existing stand, uh, standing seam metal roof. And we're going to use that same roof system, um, but we're going to put this um, uh, uh, this open this up uh, so that we can get proper ceiling height in the back of the building. Being secondary elevation um, and not being seen from the street, um, I think that this is an appropriate approach to get the uh, circulation up. Thank you. I understand the stair concept. Um, did, did you say that you, that this is a building that you're making into five, or did I misunderstand that? Uh, yeah, yes, the apartments, we, we currently have four apartments in this building, and we're going to add a fifth apartment. Excuse me, the fifth apartment is on the third floor, but it only has one stair servicing it? No, uh, the fifth floor, it, 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 it has... Yeah, there'll be one stair coming down and we'll have, um, you know, uh, the, there's a there's an egress window in the bedroom for us. But you don't need a second means, you don't need a second stair means of egress for that third floor? No, because we have a dedicated egress out of the bedroom. That's our understanding. The, you, oh, you have a second means of egress coming out of the second floor for that right. suite. That's okay. Correct. All right. Very good. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's great to see this building brought back to life and reuse. It's terrific. And it certainly is full of wonderful idiosyncrasies, the spacing of the windows in the front. It, it, it's possibly a combination of at least three other buildings, right? I mean, it could be who knows what its history is, but I, actually, I, I, I think it's terrific that you're not trying to make it so uniform across the front and living with the irregularly spaced windows. I, I wonder just two things. In this proposed north elevation, front elevation that you're showing, the first floor windows appear to be about the same size as the second floor windows. And I think that makes for, our, I, I think that's unlikely in terms of it's what you're a vinyl siding off. Um, because I think that typically we would expect the first floor windows to be larger. So 
this window pattern that's exhibited here probably dates to the vinyl siding, not to the original design. I think the building would be more ha handsome if it had a larger, taller window on the first floor, more consistent with the traditional Greek architecture of the second floor windows being shorter than the first floor window. The other comment I have is on the rear elevation, the three large panes of, uh, of windows that you're proposing for the kitchen on that second floor. I don't really have any objection to the volume of glass that's there. Uh, that is the overall, the overall dimension of those three panels. But for it to be, but for it to be, uh, it's a very awkward proportion to me that they be three casements or three fixed uh, units like that. Uh, given the size of the glass in the building, I just think it would be more attractive to either have a combination of ganging up of double hung windows or a combination of ganging up of double hung and casement windows. You could have double hungs with a casement or an awning above but just the three large panels, I find to be unattractive. Uh, that's all, thanks. You can certainly explore that window configuration too. Be more than happy to do that. I do also want to mention something that um, we are, uh, we, the, this, this property does have a garage off of the alleyway in the back. And um, what we're hoping to do is uh, to um, remove the garage and, and have surface parking for the tenants in this building. Um, currently, there isn't enough parking for um, the, the configuration as it is now, and we would like to um, remove that structure so we actually have more space to, to put the cars in the garden. Is that part of this application? It is part of this application, yeah. So uh, you you would need, I, I don't know what your conversations have been with Craig, uh, you would need a demo permit, and it's, uh, it's in itself sort of a separate discussion. Uh, we we would there, need to see what that building is and what its yeah. history is and what it looks like. Okay. All right. We have uh, we do have some. We can certainly provide you some uh, images of this right now. There's a as we share our screen, you can see this is what it looks like now. Um, it is uh, vinyl sided with uh, two small garages. Um. It, it looks like it's of 20th century of little consequence to me, but have any evidence of it being an older building, it would, it would be the, on the inside, it would be the bottom half of an older building. Right, right. <laughs> uh, it if, if it part of this application is to remove this building, and I think that if the applicant can testify that it is a 20th century building, I think we could make it part of the uh, of this application. But that, Phil, I really rely on you to guide us through that. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's not a problem. We can, we can move forward. Craig may have some other process in, in, in terms of demo. And I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any brilliant thoughts. The building is not consequential. Uh, the, the appearance of uh, a bunch of cars in your face as you go up and down the alley becomes uh, uh, a change of experience in the alley. But I understand why you need to do that if you're going to support the tenancy that you've got on the other side. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I am saddened. Uh, the alleys are, are beautiful in their weirdness. Uh, and if they end up just being parking lots, uh, that's not a lot of fun. I feel a little uncomfortable uncom about making a decision about this demolition today because we're so reduced in numbers. And generally speaking, we hold demolition at a higher standard than, than changes to a building. We do, and I agree with you. I would like, uh, if, if the guys are willing to consider that, to give this a bit of a think if we could pull out the demo part uh, and just move forward on the main building, would that work for you or is that not viable? I think that's fine for us for now, sure. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be difficult. I'd, I'd no, like that's to- That's okay, no, I understand. This is kind of, 
you know, I added it towards the end of the presentation. And, well, and we were always concerned about this being a, um, you know, something that might be uh, dove, dove into a little bit deeper. The, the commission is not, I, I've been on it a while, it has not been consistent uh, in, in how it thinks about or, or approaches the alleys. Uh, but uh, the only thing that's certain is that there's going to be more and more pressure uh, on us to open up uh, the possibility of demoing, uh, in some cases, uh, 20th century utility buildings, but in other cases, some, some really um, legitimate historic structures for parking, for Airbnb, uh, for whatever, and uh, if 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 you don't, if you forgive us, it, I'd I'd like a pause on thinking about that. It's not the the uh, that specific structure per se. I'd like the commission to think about the alleys overall and and have a conversation among ourselves about what we plan to do, because uh, certainly uh, pressure to do different things is coming. Uh, if agree. With 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 your uh, uh, agreement that we're not going to include the uh, the the demo the, those uh, garage slash utility structures, uh, I think we're pretty straight up on on the main structure. Uh, you're going to open up uh, uh, some vinyl. Will you have an opportunity to get a sense of what Chip was talking about in terms of the original fenestration, size of openings and whatnot? Yeah, I believe so. I, I think once we start removing that demolition around those front windows, we could probably uh, see what the original uh, framing is. And even we might even be able to do an exploratory probe on the interior, see where the rough uh, openings are and maybe the existing stash boxes still exist on the ground floor. Could you, uh, do you feel you'd be able to do some of that exploration uh, within the next two weeks? Is, is that realistic or am I proposing again an unrealistic hurdle? Not a problem. We'd be more than happy to, to see what we can come up with. We're going to be um, looking at Allen Street uh, early next week anyway, so we'll, we'll go over to Warren and do some more digging. What What I'm asking is that if you if you see an opportunity to be to to respond positively, what Chip was talking about in terms of fenestration and scale, uh, larger windows perhaps below, smaller ones above, and so on, uh, that you kind of seize that opportunity and get that information back to us before the next meeting. Phil, did we ever discuss historic photographs of this building? Since it's on Warren Street, it seems likely that there would have been historic photos, which might help us with all of this. I, we did not. Uh, what, what's been your experience trying to find them? I mean, uh, I see Carol, Carol's still hanging with us. She would be a potential. I, I think what this poor building is, not had a lot of love in a long time. Uh, I don't know how many uh, bits of it are even recognizable a bit, a bit anymore, but sure. Uh, could, you, could you take a, 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 do a little bit of work on that and, and see if we find other, other North Stars uh, to incorporate in the, in the final solution? Sure, we'd be more than happy to do more research on it. We didn't have much luck finding and a lot of historic uh, documentation in terms of photographs of this property, but we can certainly keep digging. And I think if we do some exploratory probes yeah, in the interior, we can, and, and maybe in the, well, the exterior, I'm a little bit worried about taking anything out because we are a street frontage. And I right. don't want to, you know, add more broken window to a broken window at home. You know? I understand. But, but as much as you can find from the inside out, again, to get an understanding of what the fenestration is about and, and, and uh, whether there's an opportunity uh, to, to create something uh, legitimately of, of aesthetic value other than same, same, same. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, I agree, 100%. Okay, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So we're, say all this in the so context. Interrupt. So it's a great thing that you're rescuing this neglected old building. Thank you. <laughs> and we just wanted to say, I don't know if we're left to speak. Pardon? Um, um, just wanted to say hello. So we're uh, two of the owners of the building. I'm Alex Friedman and Alex Hammerschlag is on too. So it was a uh, Alan Warren Street. Just wanted to thank you guys for your time. And to your point, um, 
Mr. Foreman about the pictures. We did contact the library. They weren't able to find us anything on these buildings or the other building that you have on 8th Street. Um, we did a lot of digging. We actually found one interior picture when Warren Street uh, you you're, you're coming in and out. I, I lost a chunk. Sorry. We pictures with the library um, and we've been looking. We only found one interior picture of Warren Street. So if anyone has any ideas, uh, we'd be more than open to suggestions because we haven't been able to find much. Okay. If 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 any any of us can help uh, uh, to find stuff, we'll we'll participate as well. But but the onus is on you to keep, keep on trying. Uh, just to let you guys know too is that we did contact the State Historic Preservation Office because they do have a lot of documentation, as you are aware of, of the local of, of, of towns and cities in New York State. Um, unfortunately, the the offices are closed to the public, so I can't go through the files themselves. But hopefully, you know, if things start opening up, we'll, we'll get some more information. Um, I'm very confident that we can get a lot of information by probing the interior. All right, that 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 that's not a bad way to go in terms of what we're asking you to consider. So thank you on that. Uh, may I have a motion then uh, to uh, find the application complete. We'll address the the contingencies when 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 we when we vote. But we're we're conscious of the fact that these guys have committed uh, to doing some exploration, determine the uh, as much as possible the original fenestration. Uh, anyone make that motion? You. Thank you very much. And a second, please. I'll second. Thank you, Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? There are none. Uh, motion to waive a public hearing to request the city attorney to prepare a certificate of appropriateness uh, that will include in, in degree of specificity such details are discovered uh, by the applicant within the next two weeks. Uh, anyone make that motion? I do. Thank you very much, Chip. And a second, Hugh, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any commissioners opposed? There are none. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time. Apologize right. for static. I have uh, declared that we were done uh, two times previously, incorrectly. <laughs> this is my third shot uh, at declaring we were done. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. Bye-bye. Shall we adjourn? Let's do it. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.